buongiorno and welcome to another edition of barn burner here on uh, the youtubes and in your ear holes uh maybe it's spotify maybe it's the apples where else would you get it apples and Spotify's, amazon eyes amazon mm -hmm. uh the youtube yeah sure maybe some uh, bon appetit to you infiltrated our, our system maybe they're not doing any of that maybe it's some you know some dark web thing and you're Ooh, stealing with the onion tor browser <sighs> if you're stealing yeah, it you, if you're on napster wow well, real nice watch your ass boy i love uh, napster yeah napster was did. good for a while there so good i spent yeah. hours yeah i always thought it was funny there was like 12 people that had a lawsuit with napster and it was like mm. There's like a 300 to million to a billion people doing this. We're just going to scapegoat like 10 people here. <laughs> uh, you've been charged uh, $11 billion for downloading music. I hate 11 Everyone's billion doing when it. It gets me fast. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, well, let's jump right into it. Opening statements for our, uh, our good friends over at McLeod Law. Shane King, partner in the litigation and dispute resolution group at McLeod Law, specializing in areas like employee rights being laid off, being terminated can be difficult. Shane can review your situation, make sure that you've been treated fairly. And as the law requires, using a practical approach in plain language, not that legal jargon. So like that. Uh, opening statements for McLeod Law 4-1, the Buffalo Sabres defeat the Calgary Flames. Uh, as uh, both Kelly and Rick said in the broadcast, a little, you know, a little deceiving this final score now because there's two empty netters there. Really, this was kind of a, this was a tight, close hockey game. Mm. And... Uh, uh, you know, I suppose it was. I shots 33-29 for the Flames. Um, it was it was one of 82 games on the schedule, I noticed, for the Flames last night. I sure did play a hockey game between two teams that sure would love to be playoff teams but aren't. Yeah, they uh, they did. Mm -hmm. Took to the ice, played. There were three periods of hockey. And at the end of the night, Buffalo got two points and the Flames got zero. And one was the second empty netter because I was running through the exits with 30 seconds to go and it was still 3-1 here as the young man uh, had camped this morning. Did they, they kept it empty at 3-1? Yeah, they went, uh, went for it again. Hey, they're in this playoff chase, Ryan. They're going to win, Ryan. Yeah, they're 12 all, back with 14 All to play. points are super critical and important. You That's are... Throw in the towel, Pinder. Just what? hey, Go it was ahead. a great weekend for the inverse standings. Holy shit! Buckle up. Woo! What a day! Quitter. I guess that's what you are. I'm well, glad. To say, I'm some glad of us, to... Dean, want to see a competitive hockey team in the future, not this for the next ever. We right? said they worked hard all year. They competed. Yeah, Come on, don't hard, yeah. give up on them, Pinder. Not giving up. They're doing a great job. This is exactly what you'd want. Work hard. Close right. games. Ah, shucks, you lost by one, plus empty netters, and a team passed you in the upside-down standings. Damn. I spoke I spoke to Rob Ray yesterday morning and uh, was informed that he'd about had it with the road trip and wanted to get his ass home. It had been long and boring, and they were sick of Western Canada, and if we could just leave. And so when it, I went to watch the game and it said blacked out, I was okay with that. Hmm. So, for be for the opening statements, then uh, and beyond the final four one score, that's that'll be our analysis. Then, <laughs> given the blackout, hmm. I think I know how that game was played. Mm -hmm. Tell us, tell us more, Red. Even yeah. before it started, two teams in the dumps, little lackluster, unemotional, mm. quiet at the dome. You could talk to your buddy across the. Across the rink, probably, if you really wanted to. Yeah. So you were at the game, Ryan? I was, yeah. I took one of the twins. Uh, I've officially declared a favorite, according to family members. So oh, you got to have one. Are. Mm. Okay, so. She was uh, library-esque. But that's, I mean, look, we're game, what, 69 out of 82 or something like that? Like, it's, whew. 70. Game was 70. it game 70 last night? Yeah. Well, excellent. One more run off the gamut <laughs> they've been uh they've been very good all year in terms of like not being disappointed like last year at this time was just an absolute nightmare um i don't know what can i tell you like i thought they were they were good they weren't great wolf wants the first one back krebs nice to see him score his grandma was sitting behind us got on tv that was pretty grandma. hilarious grandma was jacked for 
the young 29 man. 29 games or something in between goals? Oof. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, I don't think that's I what feel they bad for her, though. Made the trade in Vegas, right? Yeah, she goes to see her grandson. Mm -hmm. Have this drunk idiot in front of her all night. Yeah, no, it was a Sunday 7 with my son, so it wasn't that. As I said, mm -hmm. a drunk idiot. Like, Boom looks enthralled with the game. Like, he really wants to dive well, in. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, what, what else did he do this weekend? It, it, uh, did you he have time have for the game? Hmm? Did I watch? Yes, I watched the game. Okay. I did. And, and your uh, opening statements would be? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I kind of laid it out there. One team won, uh, yeah. one team lost. Uh, it was one of 82. So you, why did you watch then? That's You could have done the blackout routine with that analysis. Well, I feel it's important to watch. <laughs> when you do the uh, the next day, the nine or ten minute highlight package, Yeah. and there's no highlights, it's yeah. an indicator of... <laughs> when they're showing icing... <laughs> Yeah, no. icings on the oh. highlight. Yeah, they the sizzle reel the zone, and then oh, it got ice. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, they got the linesman throwing out Kadri out of the face off, and then throwing out the winger and another guy. Like you're really stretching this out, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> no, that said, five seconds of lining up yeah. to drop the puck. Uh, the Flames did try and generate some highlights for the Sabers. There were some breakaways. Yes. that Wolf had to stop uh, along the way. There, some sc some your boy had chances. a breakaway too. What Who's was he doing there on that move? Who? Your boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, you know, he's got to keep you thinking. I'm, I'm going to slap it. No, no, I'm t dragging it out. And he did almost score on the rebound. I think the he third, the really third, tricked the, yeah. on, the, on the fake slapper. He really tricked him. Uka did did uh, UPL bite on that hard or what? Uka puka. He almost yeah. fell over. Yeah. Looking back, maybe just shoot the first one. Why not? No, uh, but no, it was yeah, like it's, uh, yeah, you know. Second of a back-to-back, travel in the middle. They've been off for a while, but that that was not the recipe for a great game. Are we going to have any great games moving forward? Uh, no. Oh, it's um, uh, sparse. What would be a good game in here? You got the Oilers. There's always some juice there. Winnipeg will come to town. There'll be some juice there. That's mm. about it. Vancouver, meh. No. I don't feel a lot of juice with Winnipeg. The Oilers thing is... Although, and and I think for them right now... They want this season to end. There's a few teams out there that are just, can we wrap this shit up? Because I don't think we're going a whole lot higher in the standings. I don't think we're falling a whole lot. And we're not going to be judged at all on what happens in the next month, three weeks. Yeah. 12, 11, 13 games. Edmonton's just, just on the outside of that huge clump at the top. Yeah. Could like, we just get to the playoffs yeah. right now? Because but only then does it matter. My concern with the Oilers game, and there's always juice, you said. Like, okay, fine. Can you imagine four waiver pickup defensemen going up against McDavid? <laughs> like, have we have they had that? Ex like, is there any trepidation there that perhaps this might not look real good after a period? I'm just trying to remember when the last one was. It was pre deadline, so you had Hannafin and Hannafin Tanif Tanif played unbelievable. He was a stud. And did Tanif play, or was he already gone? Because I think. Sure. I don't remember. Hannafin I thought he was scored. gone right before that. Yeah, Hannafin had a great Hannafin was here for sure. Uh, hmm. So uh, we'll just take a look here now. We know that this week there are three games. Chicago, St. Louis, L.A. here on Saturday. And then I'll, rather than just give you the, the, like the timeline, I'll just kind of give you the opponents that you'll see in the month of April. San Jose, Anaheim. Twice. Twice. Anaheim, San Jose. Arizona, Winnipeg, mm -hmm. LA again. So it's LA the potential twice. is there for it to be a sleepy four weeks. There's probably only two or three teams that can't move up or down that kind of feel stuck. Edmonton's one of them. Uh, Carolina's probably the other. Everyone else has got shit to play for here. But for the Flames, I don't know. Like, just show us the kids. And Kent said it on Afterburner last night. I thought it was a really good point. Like, we don't see the back on line anymore. Like, you know exactly what that group's given you because you've seen it for three years. Like, put someone else on the wing. Play Pelche. Get, move some kids around. Like, find some things here. And he had noted that the year that Daryl arrived midseason after they canned uh, old Coach Ward there, uh, that's when they found the kachuk Gaudreau lindholm line was late in a lost season. And that's not to say that, oh, they're going to find some magical line that will be the best in the league for next year. No, but, like, we know what these lines do. We don't need to see more of them. Like, try Pospisil and Zary in different spots. 
see what a kid would look like playing with Backlund and Coleman. That to me is really the bulk of the intrigue that and where they end up in, in, in lottery positioning, right? Like that's really what this is about now, isn't it? It should be 100% kid development program yes. for the next 12. Yes. Yeah, like, extended... Penny, have a night off two in a row. Have a seat. Oh, We're gonna pull Pelche up. Let's go. Like you're playing Anaheim and San Jose. It's the kids and nothing but yeah, the kids. Here's your 20 minutes, Pelche and Coronado. And everyone else that's under the age of 25. Yeah, like Coronado didn't play last night. What the fuck are we well, doing? Well, you he's got to earn his time. You got to go. Did Pelche play last night? No, he's in the minors. It's so a Coronado, no Pelche. So it's like, I get that the coach has to try to win, but there also has to be the conversation of, okay, so you have a 0.01% chance. Are you still playing to win? Because you can actually just field a lineup where well, the guys actually might work harder anyway. I don't know about you guys. I can't even say it with a straight face. I don't know about you guys, but last night kind of felt like the dagger. Yeah, that was it, wasn't it? Yeah. And if not last night, then this weekend, I feel like it was maybe the coffin lid has shut on the playoffs. Yeah, It wasn't we that was San Jose good. lost midweek a month ago. So it wasn't Christmas, but certainly this week. Yeah, but it's close to Christmas. We'll know what they are. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> no, and I mean, I think we all agree. Yeah, it's it's an extended training camp and preseason. For next year, the 2024 oh, 25 preseason starts in uh, for, against Chicago. Yeah. Get the, well, get, and that's like, get those guys in there. But if they don't do it, that's a, I'm actually getting mad. Like, if the <laughs> approach for this organization is to F away the next 12 games playing Backlund's line and Uyghur and fucking Anderson, then you're sorry. I have to call you an idiot. Well, but at the so same wait. time, they they're playing plenty of prospective defensemen on the blue. Yeah, line. I'm not worried about the D. I'm, I'm not sure if you take Anderson and Weaver out. I guess you're right. You can no, just stop you have minutes. to play those two. I'm um, just saying, yeah, and the defense probably. You're right. I'm the, I'm over exaggerating on the blue line, but and it, I think you have to give him credit for Wolf. I, I don't believe, and we maybe we'll find out later. But I, I just never felt like that Markstrom thing was that serious. It was just an opportunity to play the kids. So good on them for that. Um, yeah. So start doing that with your forwards. That's all I'm saying. Now, like, I don't need to see Hunt and, and Dewar anymore. I know what those guys are. What? Rooney? It's your Hunt, buddy. Rear Dewar? No. It's your buddy. I've told Ryan. you he's been a good, a good Dryden Hunt. It's time to see some kids. Okay. So, so who are we talking about then? Because, like we said on the blue line, well, they are playing a lot. Oh, you're right. Okay. And they are playing Wolf and they can't play Vladar. We don't really need to see Dance, could do we? Like, we're good if Wolf plays and Markstrom, 100%. if they. Split, Split the, last... the rest of the way. Give give Wolf a couple more. I mean, okay, Rod... so we talked about Coronado. We talked about Pelche. Yeah, what, that would what... be the two to add. Okay, so are you two forwards away from being happy? Uh, it's not Who about else being happy. Do you want to spin like, through? Like, I'm not here to say, oh my gosh, like now that's the lineup I want. It's like learn some things about these kids. Like, I don't do disagree, Ryan. Like, Ryan, just, Ryan just, 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 just no, just stop. I'm saying, like, of course that's what you're talking about. You want to see them? I get it. Yeah, but how many people are we talking about? Like, do you want two. Klapka? How deep do you want this two. to go? Just two players? Just two. Okay. I don't think anyone else is knocking on the door. Okay. So, the, so, so it's that not that hard. I'll say this: it's two minimum for me. I'm a little yeah. bit different. I'm. Like, I'd rather find out what Klapka is than watch Rooney. Yeah, and I, I just think we. First off, Rooney's the guy. He's there by necessity because he plays center. Um. The it, maybe I don't know Hank Horton, Sam Morton. You want to come up and play center? That would be. <laughs> I don't know if he's allowed to on the ATO or not. That would be interesting. You know what, I what, doubt about, it. what about the the Riley Damiani kid that they got back? I mean, why not? I don't he, feel like he's he's uh, a center. Is he if an NHL prospect or is he a quad A guy? If it's, I, mean, I, well, I would let him. You, let him see are you sure as hell? Why don't you learn? Give him a chance, and what the hell's what's it hurt to give him a chance? Could, yep, yeah, sure. I just it's I, I think it's important this offseason to have a better idea what Jacob Pelche can be and where he fits in, and Coronado as well. Not saying well, we've already established yeah, that. Already part. Established so I'm just saying my priority is those two. And I know sure. we were you talking about sure. we were talking well, about you're, Greer. You're, you said he's reiterating what we've already. Pelche and Coronado have to play the next twelve games, in my opinion, and they have to play eighteen minutes. Not yeah, as much as we can see them, that would be great. I think we're all in lockstep there. Yeah, yes. for that sure. But but the rest of it is why not? The why not play more 
what's where's your downside? Why if Klapka can't do it, fine. I don't give a shit. But what's it hurt by finding out if and the, the guy that you just said, I don't care. <laughs> You're playing four three defensemen that waiver guys, yeah. Are waiver guys. Why why don't we have five forward? Well, they, and Pelche and Coronado aren't waiver guys. They're that's why I have them in a different class. Those are top prospects. Those are first round draft picks. You need to know what they are. Or have a better idea at least by we, the time again. You the we're in lockstep. Yeah. This is not a debate as to whether we want to see Coronado for the next month. Yes. It's all I'm saying. What I my point was we're up in arms, like we gotta see the kids, we gotta see the kids. Well, we're already we're kind of seeing or whatever you want to call it. You can't get much more thin on the blue line. And up front, beyond those two, mm -hmm. we're shaking our fist. How at, at what else? Are we nothing for me? We're talking about two players, so we yep. And depending where that. Poirier is at, I don't know. Like, I, I think if he missed so much time and, and there's already a ton of D, so it's probably not this year, but at some point you'd love to get him some reps. It's probably not this year. Hanzik's of the age he could, but it's it's not that type of year for him. He has been hurt too much. He needs to hopefully have a good first round with Vancouver. But, um, yeah, it's two guys, and, and that's, you know, we've seen a lot of the kids. We're not, like, knocking the team for not playing kids. They've done it. It's just at this point of the season, it's a little silly to see veterans out there that are approaching 30 and they're definitely 13th, 14th forwards. Like agreed. And I think they will. I do too. So do I. Yeah, I do. Cause they listen. They do listen. Benny dimes. You want to see some Benny dimes at center? Not really. No, not particularly. Okay. But you do want to see Demiani. I've just, it was just the name. They made a trade for him in the last month. I know. His name Sorry. So I mean, here's a, whatever he was, AHL rookie or whatever the frig he was. Okay. Well, spin him in, I guess. If, if you're looking for someone that can play center, if you have to play Greer only because you don't have centerman, well, this guy's supposedly a centerman. Uh, regardless, this is what it's going to be for the next month. Uh, I, and I would guess, I mean, we're having some fun with it, but goodness, they can't. The numbers are so far gone now as far as a playoff chase. Oh, God. Yeah, they've been dead for a while. They're, so uh, Again, get, I wasn't joking. They're, they're less than a percent. Yeah, so you get Pelche. I don't know when they're going on a road trip. I, why would Pelche not be what on this road What was the trip? approach? Sorry. To, 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 what was the approach for the last week? Well, Coronado has been in, um, so... Uh, that has yeah, but just, you put Pelche in the minors. Like uh, not, exactly, I mean, so, we're trying. I'm trying to find things to bitch about. Yeah. I guess but. I think they didn't love the way he was playing, and they wanted him to go work on some stuff and come back better. Is probably the thought. Um, uh, Huska talked about wanting to see him play with less fear, and yeah. maybe that's the result of getting his shoulder schmucked by Jacob Truba, and that was his second shoulder issue this season. But I honestly like if you're going to send him to the minors and you haven't even let him play on the back of the line, what are we doing, guys? Like that's the perfect spot for him, and if not that, how about his pal Huberto? Like, so what would you do with the Backland line then? Well, I, I just think who are, I guess who are I you telling? Is it Mandrapani or is yeah, it? I don't yeah, yeah, Mandrapani. Exactly, He's not like doing shit. So, and, and if you're gonna give a rookie a spot to learn and 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 to be with some veterans, and you talk about culture and playing the right way, like Coleman and Backland are your most professional and dependable 200 foot players. They just are. Yeah. So put a kid there. That's the easiest spot in the lineup, the left right, side we, of that line. We had someone approach us at Greta the other night saying, hey, could you guys lay off Manjapani? Is that I mean, right? It'd be nice if you guys could just lay off this guy. He's a good guy. He's this, he's that. He's, uh, listen, we're not saying he's not a nice guy. He's a great guy, wonderful guy. But as I just continue to watch, it feels like the the, the top speed I feel like it's coming down a little bit. The effectiveness is coming down. We're not seeing the shit disturber level that we used to see. He's just kind of, he, he looks like a slowing winger he to me. Right like a guy they just have so many wingers. I, I, it's fresh start. Glut, right? Fresh start for sure, I think. Feels like it. I, I, I'm going to look it up, but I'm, I'm guessing the puck luck has been nowhere near his career normal as well. Like, how many times has he danced through a guy's legs and then put it wide? You're like, oh, I can't buy one here. Like, even well, when he's creating chances, you, he's not finishing. How many games have you noticed him? We, we liked not him enough. a fair bit. We were pretty pro Manjapani. Mm -hmm. like, it's just a flash 35 and expectations change. That's just no, life, but right? that, uh, and I, I know what you're saying, and 
there is some truth to that. But for me personally, and I think probably for our crew, it's more be noticed. You're not yeah. a pain in the ass. He's not shooting the puck enough. I'm looking at it. I, like, yeah. And yeah. I get it. That line has heavy lifting, but it's also a line that. But Coleman's had a career year. Like that's sense. the other thing too, right? When you got one guy on your on the other wing that's putting up career numbers, yeah, you're probably going to see some guy. But he's 27. It just it still feels like it's a little early for him to be hitting a career. I just on, honestly, we've heard guys and GMs talk. Brian Murray always used to say, it. "Some guys need to get traded every once in a while." Well, that's yeah. It's almost not. It's not even a. It's not a slight. It just is. And, and honestly, if you don't add a Kuzmenko and you don't have the emergence of Zeri and Postle, maybe things look very differently. But it's yeah. just right now, there's just so many bleeping wingers. And I honestly think if they can find a way to upgrade on Sharon Govich at center, he's a he's a better winger. Like, I think it's impressive what he's been able to do at center, but the shot totals aren't the same. And I think that guy's shot, you probably have better opportunity to, you know, weaponize his offense when he's on the wing. That's another winger to a group that's already crowded. Never mind Coronado and Pelcher that didn't play. Like it just feels like there's there's no room for Manjapani at this point. And like, that's and it's a good thing, right? At the end of the day, when you have maybe. guys coming through the system that are potentially pushing older slash veterans out or yep. down the roster, the emergence of Possibles and Zeri's been a good thing. It's all been good. Not good for him, Manjapani, but good for the overall uh, the overall picture. What? Sure. And he was the guy that did that. Six, seven years ago, right? Like he started on the fourth line and then he started taking away Michael Froelich's ice time and other guys like that. Like this is what happens. He His peak season was at 25 years of age. That's probably very common. He had 35 goals two years ago. He's at 13 this year. Tough year. Tough year. Uh, I feel like that's good for opening statements today. There we go. Hit the quota. There you go. McLeod Law, whether your challenge is business or personal, McLeod Law is in it with you. Professionals with a common goal that is helping clients meet their goals and needs. McLeod Law, proud of their Calgary roots, McLeod-Law.com. We'll have Frank Saravelli joining us here in a matter of moments, our uh, NHL insider with dailyfaceoff.com. The, um, there, was, there was some interesting things yesterday. We've got uh, a 50-goal scorer in Edmonton. A 50-goal scorer in Florida? Not the ones you'd necessarily pick in Edmonton. Rhett, how, yeah, how old were you when you hit 50 goals for the first time? 12? Because it's, it's impressive. Zach and Hyman, 31 years of age. It's his first 50-goal season. So there you see it. Sam Reinhardt, 50 goals. Only two guys were older than Zach Hyman in NHL history when they hit 50 for the first time. Joe Mullen. Whoa. He was 32 when he hit 50. And Johnny Busick, 35 years old when he hit 50 for the first time. You were, you were younger uh, than that, though, right? I was way younger. I was way like, younger. When I, I played on three, no, two teams when I was six years old in Frontier, yeah. I definitely got 50. That it's Probably closer to 100, right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, Frontier. They couldn't. Uh, they couldn't contain Frontier Flyers. What are we talking uh, about here? Jim Curry was coaching. My God, Look Jimmy. Up. Oh, Jimmy Curry. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Frank sent me a text. Apparently, he needs about five minutes. That's fine. Yeah, I'm not going to say why, but he needs about five. Uh, about five minutes. Uh, the Oilers lost to Ottawa despite the uh, 50 goal. Excellent. Well, and the night after they <laughs> lost to Toronto, I had mm -hmm. a lot of money on the Oilers bouncing back. Those assholes. <laughs> What are you doing betting? On, come what are you on. betting the Oilers? How can you do it? Well, the number is nice. I mean, come on. You well, it's still your, your money. It. You're taking your money and putting it on the Oilers. You know what it is? It's the classic Andrew Walker happiness hedge. No matter what happens, I'm good. It's a good thing. Lose to Ottawa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it's thing. like, oh, they beat Ottawa. Yeah, I know, but I made some money. I guess I can yeah. live with it. So uh, just going back to what we were kind of talking about, the Oilers are kind of in that spot. Is this going to be a, hey, we can't, we got to stay motivated. We got to, because no one really cares. Aside from maybe personal, can McDavid win? The, like I, I don't know what's what's there for the Oilers over the next month. No, it's them in Toronto. That's the only two teams that really can't move. I'm looking at it like Nashville's fighting for a wild card. The top seven are all separated by one point. Look at that today, by the way. I, I don't think it's ever happened in NHL history before. Seven teams separated by one point at the very top. Out east. Yeah. So I mean, I understand there's a couple teams that aren't playing. Everyone else has got tons to play for here. 
like 97 points for Boston, Dallas, Carolina, Colorado, Florida, 98 for the Rangers and the Canucks. Look at this. Have you ever seen that? That's wild. Oh, I, I, in the I, overalls, I see. I, yeah, like, so that's, you want to talk about teams playing for stuff. That's seeding right there. That's home versus the 2-3. That's playing a wild card versus a really good team. There's lots in there. What do you like, by the way? There's like seven really good teams. I I just keep seeing Colorado go down and then going, we say it, now we get to say it, and I love saying they flex and they just come back and kick your ass did you they see what they did yesterday nothing. yes four nothing <laughs> they they flexed and mckinnon's home point streak has been the whole season every single home game he's got a point they go into the third he doesn't have a point and it's like posts and nadelkovich is upside down jack's texting me telling me the penguins rally starts now they're gonna make a late push and i'm like i can't bet enough on colorado right now <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, they start chipping away, chipping away. It's 4-2. They nearly score with a second left in the second period to get it within one. And then it's just like, as soon as it got to 4-3, you're like, oh, yeah, they're winning this thing. It's just is it regulation or overtime. There's no, there's no doubt. They are so scary. 18-game point streak overall, 34 yeah. straight on home ice. He finished with uh, setting up the 4-3 goal and then scoring the 4-4 goal, Brett. Hmm. Why not? Well, I got to help her on the, the overtime win. On the overtime by his so buddy. <laughs> His buddy drew in. <laughs> this has worked out okay. Oh, man. That's fine, yeah. yeah. It's so Game funny. Changers. Like, you watch the Flames and you're like, everyone has to be so solid. You can't make any mistakes. You need a full 60-minute effort. And you just remember back to times when they had teams that were kind of a wagon, like that Kachuk line. Like you could have two periods where you slept walk, sleepwalk, and it's just like, yeah, we'll go get you a couple in the third here, fellas. We're good. Oh. Those days, huh? Well, they get this draft pick this year, and then next year. Next year, the draft pick they're sending to Montreal, or the? Well, we hate Sean Monahan. We got to get him out of here. That yeah. sticks in my backpack. Is that yeah. in your backpack? Anyone? Well, anyone? It made sense for the. This team is a piece away, and the GM thought that was the case, but it just carried such a high risk with it because it was already a pretty old group that you'd locked into. But then I go back to the other thing that's in my backpack. I know it's the because the they kind of go hand in hand. Extension. So yeah, you're a piece right. away. Yeah. yeah. Then you should have asset managed. And like you if you if you want to say, okay, we think Sean is is a great guy, but. The production has dropped off. The injuries are incredible. Like it's going to be a rough two, three years. He might never be a player again. And we think it's a massive upgrade to go to Nazem Kadri. I agree with all that. The challenge is when you push a draft pick so many years out, how do you know you're not going to be bad by then? But it's right? but it was twofold. You were you were giving away the draft pick and then spending the money in turn on the new guy. On an old Right, it wasn't like we'll send this first rounder out just to get Sean off the roster oh, because this drafted kid right we have God. is ready to take over. No, no, we'll get rid of the first and now get out the checkbook and buy another one. Pick up a thirty-two year old. Yeah, that's what they did. Now, if it worked out, no one would be no one would be bitching. And to be fair, like if if you're Nazem Kadri's camp, like he's been good. He scored what twenty six last year, kicked into neutral for a month, and he's been their best forward this year. All it speaks of is it was loose asset management. We totally. all know it, and it's yep. fucking hurts now. Really, yeah, I'm hurts. with you. Uh, and we'll get to Frank because he's standing by. Now you had it stuck in your backpack. Does it stick in your craw? Oh, mm. and then it goes. And sometimes where is your craw? It's it gets it's like a wedgie. You, know, yeah, you can't it's right get in there. there. Trying to yank it right up. It's, it's a T bar welded armor. in there. Oh. Time to head to the TELUS Insider Hotline. Oddly enough, presentation of TELUS. You can win one of six monthly prizes, including tickets to Calgary hockey games, awesome tech like AirPods, Apple Watches, and more. No purchase necessary. Just go online, fill out the quick survey, and you could win. TELUS.com slash Flames Contest. Our insider from Daily Faceoff, Frank Saravelli. Good day, Franklin. Frank is Franklin official? Are we doing Franklin, the full Franklin on the birth certificate? Uh, my full name is uh, Francis. Francis. Yeah. Got it. Francis. 
but it has not been a good day around here. I don't know Uh-oh. what to, what uh, what's happening. It's a tough day to do live TV. Uh, just a stomach bug coursing mm. through my veins. I don't know which end it's coming out. In fact, that's why I was uh, a few minutes late, just absolutely dumb and dumbering it. Too today. much info. So you do know which end it's coming out. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm, honestly, I just did my last show for a half hour with a few hiccups that made it some close calls. Buke. I had a it's lot been of a day. Here. It's been a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you stepped on. In fact, the I sent I sent the gift to. Uh, huh? I sp- I sent the gift to Boom right right from the can. Yeah, you did. I again. Yeah. It's a lot to get Deep, through. Charlie, you you asked. I mean, I, you said good day, and I said no. I, that was not. Hey, Frank, how's your hoop? It was good day, Frank. I even then went to your first name. You know, Frank. The, you know. That we're here, I am going to say, not my doing. Anyway, we can move on. I would take a three-week stomach virus, though, if it meant some weight loss. Oh. I don't know if that's the way, Frank. Every, each to his own. But. You got to be happy in your own skin, man. <laughs> hey, look, I'm just looking for a little bit of a boost. Just give me a head start to get me on my way. This is going great. 47 pounds over three weeks. I would take that. I think it comes back fast. Mm, That's maybe uh, not. a lot of weight. Is Boom just disgusted right now? What's he so doing? how about those avalanche? We were just talking about the uh, never dead, never out of it Colorado avalanche. Down 4 nothing yesterday. They roar back to win it. Dangerous. Dangerous team. Uh, to me, the top threat in the West. I don't. I'm not going out on a limb saying that, but it's really amazing when you look at the last six weeks, they've yeah. changed out 30% of their forward core. You take a look at their penalty kill. Perfect. Since the trade deadline. What? And I I'm looking at the size that they added in Trennan, Trennan. and Duhame, yeah, and guys that can skate at the same time. I mean, we just went through this a full breakdown of the abs on our daily face off live show. And so I mentioned the perfect penalty kill, but the amazing part about it is that none of their stars play on their PK. (laughs) It is a spot where their tanks are not going to be depleted. They're not asking them to do too much. And they're wildly successful using that bottom six. They all serve a purpose Uh, It feels like they were all sort of curated selections, if that makes any sense. And it's an, it's an incredible job of building out their roster. Like, but by the way, um, I don't, I have to double check. I don't think they gave up their first round pick this year. The point you make like curated pick. We, we were told that you kind of learned that about Vegas they kind of go out, we're going to find guys that fit not just the role, the specific role that we're looking for, but can you play our style? Because they've changed head coaches and they play a certain way. And I remember it was it was a long time ago, but they were talking about Colorado. It's like, can you skate? Can you play this way? Mm-hmm. Then we'll find we'll find a hole for you somewhere within the roster. Because then if you can be an Av, you can you can play wherever we need you. The Avs are so scary. Yeah, the, the speed, the ability. How many times are we going to see three and four goal comebacks in one year to let you know that they think that's routine? The power that they have, the size. Um, I, I don't want to like further alarm anyone, but go look at Cal Cal Ritchie and the job that he's done this year. He he might be the best prospect in the league. He's certainly in the top five. That's how good he is. Um, so where they're that team's only getting better and better, and they still have their first round pick this year. Yeah, they traded their next year's in the Sean Walker deal that also got rid of the Johansson money. And you'd said it last week. They moved a guy that was a top pair guy in Philly under their third pair. That's that's how good this team is. do you see Walker concern in net? Three goals, by the way, since he it's got been great. Him. It's been great. Um like they got Gor- Georgiev, uh, Franzos is always hurt, and now this Ananin is the backup. They won with Kemper. Do they not need elite goaltending just okay? Like, how do you view the crease there? That's to me is the only question mark. Is like I, I think Georgiev not only has he played too much, he's already at 66 games. 
Um, I think when you look at his numbers, they're really pretty pedestrian below league average, although he leads the league in wins. Mm -hmm. um, Ananen has been a bit of a surprise. His numbers at the NHL level this year are significantly better than they've been at the AHL the last couple years. And I, I know that they had talked about getting Georgiev to play fewer games, but so far to this point, that hasn't happened. He's been on pace for about, 68 games all season long. I, I think that's too many. Um, I'd be real curious to see how that holds up in the postseason. But I think your point is well made in the sense that I, I was at those games and watched Kemper, and he he might have been he might have played the worst of any starting goalie to win a cup in as long as I can remember. Yet they had Francois step in at varying points when Kemper was injured, and they didn't miss a beat. So perhaps. Maybe when your forward group and defense are that strong, maybe it's not as big of a concern. So what about Dallas? I think we're all on board Colorado. They look, and it's not just the way they do it. It's not just that they do it. It's the way they do it. But it feels like every time we talk about Colorado, you go a little further down and Dallas, keeping pace with Colorado, gets another win. And they did that yesterday as well. Are we sleeping on the stars? I'm not. I mean, I, I had the stars as my cup pick before the season started. And it, it's not that I'm wavering from that. It's just up. I, I think what I'm watching in Colorado is truly special with that combination of speed and skill and size. Um, Dallas has some elements of that. Their goaltending uh, is, an, is actually, to me, a fair question mark. And I know people in Calgary are like, who's questioning Jake Ottinger in the playoffs? But Look at his numbers this year, sub 900, uh, and missed a significant chunk of the year due to injury. I really like what Dallas has done. I think the Tanev addition was really smart because it just added an element that they didn't have. And you look at the continued youth movement that they have with, you know, Stankoven coming in 11 points in 14 games, Wyatt Johnson taking another step forward, you know, this year. He had 24 goals last year. He's already up to 26. He's potentially, as a 20-year-old, having a 30 and 30 season, which as a center and winning 50% of your draws is kind of unheard of. So I think the biggest thing for the Avs um, and or the Stars would be to try and avoid a really difficult first-round matchup. Like one week ago at this exact period in time, we, we had the Jets leading the division and now they've lost three straight and it's sort of changed the dynamic of the bracket because you were yeah. originally looking at abs and stars in round one, which is just a steel cage death match. Right. And then now it's Dallas and Winnipeg, not to say that it's a huge drop off, but I think to me in terms of talent and how they play and depth, um, I think there's a pretty significant difference between abs and jets. So for Dallas, um, not sleeping on them by any stretch of the imagination. We'll get that matchup at one point. You would think abs and stars, although the jets will have something to say about that, man. And like nine wins in a row for Colorado, just to get a point ahead of Dallas and a few ahead of, of uh, Winnipeg and the, the reward will be, Oh, you get a wild card now instead. And that's the hottest team in the NHL in Nashville or a Vegas team. That's probably going to be a lot healthier. Like, Oh man, the West is just tough. It's it's bananas to think about how this like I the way I view it, and I've said this all season, six authentic Stanley Cup threats, and two of them guaranteed to lose in the first round. Guaranteed. That's that is carnage. And so is, you, is it LA and Nashville, the posers for you? Yep. Are you in the group that would like to see it go back to one versus eight, two, seven? I don't think it matters. Don't matter. Whether you win, you know, you get through one round or not, it, there's no cupcake in round two. Uh, think about what we were just talking about. Yeah. You know, the fact that if you're the abs, instead of getting the stars in round one, you get them in round two. What's, I mean, really, what are we talking about? What's the difference? Well, unless well, there's an more... upset, right? Unless you get that first round upset and then you've got to play. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I do kind of feel like there maybe isn't enough, especially for those two threes. Because like you say, you're guaranteed to lose such a good team in round one. The I, I, It feels like maybe there's not enough there for a 
not not for Almost nothing, but like winner. the Preds and Oilers are tied in points, and yep. it's probably out of the realm of possibility. But the Preds are only five points back at the Jets. There's right. something about the Preds. We were talking last week about them. They've got 35 regulation wins. Like that's more than Edmonton. That's more than Dallas. It's impressive what they've been able to do. Now it's been a hell of a run, and maybe that's added to it. But how, how much of the the run is we haven't been paying attention? There's more there, and how much it is if it just one of those things that happens in sport where teams go on a heater. I don't have any way to explain how the Preds have reeled off this many games with points in a row. The Preds don't really either, um, because I. With all due respect to Saros and to Yossi and and maybe, you know, you include Philip Forsberg in that category and, and he's played really well with Ryan O'Reilly. Like I, I look at that lineup and especially for one that kind of, you know, was moving the pieces around at the deadline. Like they, they did move off of some pretty good players in Trenton, sending him, you know, to Colorado, for instance. And that lineup doesn't, the sorrows part is, is always a concern, but the, that lineup doesn't scare me. If I'm one of those other teams, that's, you know, part of the, the meat wagon in the West. Like I'm not looking at Nashville saying, Oh man, I don't know how we're going to possibly go head to head against this team in the first round. Like, but there is something to be said for, there's certainly something cohesive about what's happening there. They're galvanized. And I just don't know what's tying them all together. Uh, yeah, I think Colton Sissons is your second line center, and you've got a longer point streak than the Oilers had. Like, what the hell's happening here? Like, that makes it more impressive, right? <laughs> it, it makes it defy logic, which, I mean, not for nothing, we have that happen in the playoffs every year. Mm. Brunette. I I mentioned I think there's some kind of cohesive, you know, tie between coach and player. GM and coach and GM and players that has, you know, there were some obstacles this year at varying points that I think they could have, you know, sent their season in the wrong direction. And I don't know, maybe it's canceling a, a U2 show, which by the way, has been, you know, a huge joke in their dressing room. Um, <laughs> whether it's, we see it every year. There's something weird that happens that like last year was the Panthers and Keith Kachuk going on Toronto radio saying that the Panthers are soft this year. Maybe the Leafs have a five game suspension for their top defenseman. And they've been really good since like some things just happen that you can't explain. Red, Red talks about it. We talk about it. There'll be something sometimes dumb that galvanizes a group. And then it just becomes your mantra moving forward. St. Louis with, Gloria. you know, Laura Branigan back in the year that they make the run to the cup. Sometimes teams that go on these runs have something stupid. And it's the, the run is so impressive. It can't be nothing. Like it has to be something that brings the team together. That, that Blues one is still insane. Last in the league in, in a South Philly bar. Uh, after a, a drunken, you know, Mummer's Day parade, which is our New Year's, like that bar still is full of St. Louis Blues fans, which makes no mm. sense. They converted a few, I bet. That's a hell of a ride they went on there. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Red looks good today, doesn't he? Red yeah. shirt. Looks like he's ready to golf. Yeah. The hat matches the shirt. Just, is he going out for nine after the show? Well, um, what he wants, he wants to go to, he wants to go see you in Philadelphia. He's still. been talking about this for a couple of weeks. Now. He wants an invite after you feel better. Uh, okay. Well, I've got some tickets. Um, I don't know. Maybe you've I'll got some tickets. Time. Just a couple hours away, Frank. Nice bottle of. Peated whiskey? Is that what you're thinking? Weed, no, weed, no, no. I don't. Weeded. Yeah, I don't like peated. Peat is the opposite. Weeded, wheat. To, what, what was it term? Weeded? Weeded whiskey, yes. Weed and whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Warner Staples. That too. That would be yeah. good. Yeah. But here's the thing, though. I, I get a real sense that Boom just doesn't have a ton of interest in mingling with you. 
Which is fine because typically he's lame to hang out with. So it's it's ten hours a week already. I feel like there's lots of hang time for the fellas. They're 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 so they're, much their quotas met every week. Here's the thing: if boom, if you get boom on like the eclipse is coming. Have you heard that the, the big yeah. eclipse? eclipse coming? And apparently the eclipse in Buffalo is going to be massive, and all the hotels are saying like this is like having ten Bills games because people <laughs> from all over are coming to Buffalo. What <laughs> to blow their eyes out on the eclipse? The point I'm making is if you get boom on the right day and the right time and the calendar year of yeah. the Lord, the year of the rat and the yeah. sun is in the right waning moon of the wax, of he can be the best partier you've ever met. But every other day, it's not every other day. I had a couple comments. nights with boom, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, at the uh, the that the old Jasper trip, he 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 hung pretty deep into the night. Yeah. Well, look well, at the trophy over. Stars align. Look at the trophy. Yeah. Okay, sitting right there. Hmm. Yeah, close. Uh, other way. Other yeah, way. other way. There you go. Uh, yeah. There you go. Oh, too much. Uh, you go. Uh, so, yeah. Rhett, in your uh -huh. in your pile of conspiracy theories, <laughs> what do you think about um, about like them designing this eclipse just to solely uh, prop up some downtrodden cities such as Buffalo and the old Cleveland. Yeah, why isn't this visible from Manhattan? Why, what Buffalo? I don't buy yeah. that shit. That's this is a marketing hoax. The Cleveland steamer, Indianapolis, like go through the list. Yeah, I mean, there serious. are some hard hit cities along the way that have suddenly had a boost in tourism. Well, it's a big world. It's a global thing. I, I I'm going to dig into it, Frank. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to dig into it here and find out what the F is really going on. Because you're right, this is a bunch of BS. I do enjoy that uh, our boy Frank is now definitely dialed in on Rat, the pile of conspiracies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, uh, I, I bet he was all over the um, the Royals stuff going on too. He was definitely oh, in on the Kate Middleton thing. You got theories on the Royals, Rat? I got theories that that yeah. chick from Suits is hot. That's my theory. <laughs> there you have it. Barn burner exclusive. There you have it. It's an exclusive for sure. Yeah, right here. All right, Frankie boy. Well, I uh, got Frank laughing. <laughs> the, the, she's hot. Yeah, he's hot. Yeah. It's an exclusive. Well, uh, let me know how you guys uh, do in your uh, coordinating for Philly. Let me right. know how that goes. So you're deciding then whether to still come or not after that? What about this NCAA Frozen Four stuff? <laughs> Worth stuff? going to? Worth you got going nearby? to? Yeah. Uh, who's nearby? Well, all that shit's close enough I mean, from here. Which I region's mean, nearby? What are they? Who's hosting? Providence. There's games oh. in Providence this week. There's also uh, Maryland Heights, Missouri. Not that close. No. And uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. What a spot to visit, uh, Frank. Do you want to meet me there? <laughs> I bet you would have a time in... I, I would have a time in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I had a friend that was in Sioux Falls, South Dakota last summer. He said it's gorgeous. What do you really? do there? You go like, see the falls at Sioux Falls. I mean, they're not the Niagara Falls, but they are quite impressive going through downtown. It's got to be something other than that, though. Close uh, to looking at the falls for a while. Okay. Close-ish to Mount Rushmore. You know Rushmore. what, Dean? For you, the 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 for you, it's it's not the destination; it's the journey. Road That's trip. true. Yeah, road yeah. trip. You love. No, I just wonder if somebody goes to Sioux Falls and said we had a hell of a good time. I can't think that they just stood looking at the falls the entire time. Yeah, it's probably like Wisconsin. You have to get blind, like drinking. Certain yeah, beers what else are we doing? Or something. Yeah. What's wrong with Wisconsin? I'm sure they got great lots of. Nice I was just saying that that's a great place to go get hammered. That's yeah, uh, but what do you tell people to do? Go there and drink with the locals. That's what you and do. Go to Bass Pro Shops. Yeah, and eat. Yeah, those aren't as rare anymore, are they? No, nah. no. Nah. They still got they got the Cabela's out there though. Yeah. They change a little bit though. When we were in Nashville, I guess it was there, right? Uh, Pinder, we yeah, went. It sure was. Right by the uh, Cause we have there. one here in Calgary and you can go yeah. and walk around there. And then, you know, the whole, the, the framework is the same, the size of the building, much the same. Um, the crowds and accessibility to handguns. Quite different. A little different. Yeah. The whole Tennessee. wing in Nashville. Yeah. It's not complicated here. Yeah. In and out in 15 <laughs> Want minutes. a gun? Buy a gun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> the longest part is when they walk you through the uh, the iPad part where like they they do ask a couple questions to try and trip you up. You're not mad right now, are you? Yeah. Are you pissed off right now? <laughs> no. You got All next right. one bugging you? Just a question. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Frankie boy. Appreciate Frank, you. Better. Uh, Pedialytes, some electrolytes. Keep the fluids up. Yeah. Oh, always big. Always big. Got to hydrate. Get the, yeah. the get those electrolytes in you there, Frankie. Appreciate you. See you guys. There you go. Frank Saravalli, our NHL insider. Again, when you could win one of six monthly prizes, including tickets to Calgary hockey games, awesome tech like AirPods, Apple Watches, and more. No purchase necessary. All you have to do is fill out that quick survey online. Do the survey. You could be a winner. Not much easier than that. Tell us.com slash flames contest. Yeah. 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 I, I like this uh, playoff format. I know a lot of people moan about it. It's like, oh, too too many good teams are playing each other. Like, oh, so you're having too many high quality series. I'm a, I'm very apologetic about that. Like, are you telling me we have to see Boston and Toronto again? God damn it! How? Like, who's not excited Come for on. that? I think the only concern is then when you if you get to a round two and there's a big drop off. If somebody yeah, if you I, have like, eight, if you uh, have six stud teams. You're gonna lose. I'm trying to think of a bad second round matchup we'd have this year. I drew I drew up the matchups. Like, do we think Philly or Washington or Detroit's going through? I don't. Well, no one thought Boston was losing last year. That's that's the thing. Upsets are upsets for a reason. Yeah. But did that take the enjoyment out of the playoffs? God no. Or... It made it no. <laughs> it spiced it up, right? Yeah, it was Florida. It was the team that won the president's trophy the year before. It was a wagon that never really got going until the playoffs. One versus eight right now in the West would be Vancouver, Vegas. Okay. Find that. Number two, the second matchup would be Colorado, LA. Okay. Fun series. Dallas, Nashville. Okay. Don't mind that. And then a uh, little prairie showdown Winnipeg and Edmonton. Okay, and then by points percentage, the tr the format we're using right now, Colorado Nashville today, Dallas Winnipeg today, Vancouver Vegas the same, and Edmonton LA for the third year in a row, which I think could get bloody. Yeah, they're both good. Yeah, and, and I'm this year is maybe not the year that would be no. the best example of that. I think it maybe was there a are years where the Boston and Toronto were both top five, and you're like, that's pretty cruel, and, yeah. and it was, but it gave us great series and you probably had to see him in round two anyway. But I, yeah, I, I just feel like the most noise about it's when Toronto gets screwed. Cause that's where every <laughs> media outlet's based. You know what yeah, I mean? Not, 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 not inaccurate. Probably not wrong. Ah, uh, what do I like to get? Yeah. I was going to tell you, did I tell you about that? I don't know if I did tell you about that. I want to tell you about service credit union. Ooh. Uh, it's a million dollars for some people. Maybe it's not worth your while. So I have to move my savings account from my current bank to service credit union. Well, what's in it for me? Well, it could be a million dollars. <laughs> and, and, you know, chances are service, the, the people, the customer service, it, it's probably it might well be better than where you're at right now. But also there's a chance to win a million dollars. Do I have to Works like, for me. What else do I have? Do I have to like go in this? Uh... Now, if it's too much for you. I guess we understand, but we're, we're willing to bet that this, sh this should be, and is worth your while as service credit union is bringing back the big share for the sixth straight year. It's your chance to win a million dollars just by saving money. Anyone can enter. You become a member at service and start saving every $500 saved gives you five entries into the service big share contest. What do you do? Well, you transfer your existing savings to service. For chances to win. Also, you can save in a daily banking account. You can fast track your savings with a high yield savings account. Invest in a GIC that service has during this contest period with great interest rates and term lengths. Save in a TFSA, RRSB for those short and long term goals. Basically, what it is, it's a chance at a million dollars. Contest ends April 30th, 2024. Skill test required for rules. Visit service.ca slash win. Yeah, that's right. It has finally stopped snowing. Uh, it started on Wednesday. Please. Started on Wednesday and continued sporadically or steadily, basically, until uh, 
pretty much yesterday. Are we convinced Rhett's not at home? This is the exact same. It was snowing when it was snowing. It's not snowing. It's not snowing. Gorgeous right now. Yeah. 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 Do you like the snow? Are you going to do some spring skiing, Dean? No. Oh. <laughs> We've talked about it. The ski boot was not built for Dean's leg. That's a good point. If I could, you know what? If I could teleport to the hill, mm. to the I would have a great hill? day. It's okay. We got to get up. We got to get the kids. We got, what do we take? We got boots. Get it all in it. Drive. Get there. Get, okay. Get the okay. ski lifts. This is, now are we going up the hill? Do we got taking that gondola to get now to the top? Okay. Let's take yeah. the gondola, get to the top. Okay. He'll do that whole thing. All right. Is everybody good? You're good. You're good. We're good. We got to get, oh, you forgot your, uh, your one boot down in the parking lot. Okay. Well, I'll go down the gondola. And uh, and get that ski boot. You guys get to... anyway. You get past all that. It's a hell of a good time. I enjoy it. And then there's the driving home when you're completely gassed. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. All that fresh air, exercise. You, that's right. Just whoo. So yeah, when if I can chopper to the top of the hill, let's go. You um, need a chalet, Dean. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, that'd be all right. Ski and ski out. Ski and ski out. Neat. Yeah. We did that one year, Kimberly, I think. Oh, yeah, really? A great hill. Yeah, it was so great. Wow. It's honestly, once you've done that, you're ruined. You, you are you're ruined. Ruined. You're like, I don't have to get in a car. I don't have to pack gear. I literally just like step into my skis and we're gone. Mm -hmm. And it's lunchtime and I just wheel in and then, like, what? Yeah. yeah. This is unbeatable. It's possible we're a little soft too us it feels like that's maybe a bit of a you know dainty problem oh you god drive, uh, you have to drive there and then drive home once you win that million bucks from service there's your chalet yeah that's right, right. <sighs> what are we gonna be into here today <laughs> Said, hey, what are you talking about oh uh, you hey. know what i'm talking about oh please oh no is it coming all kinds of hoops uh, ask Jack how many crocodiles are in today's reports. <laughs> Just ask him. Ask him. Jack. Uncle Rhythm. How Hello. many uh how many crocodile or alligator vids are there today? At least three. <laughs> and one involves a crocodile and a snake. Shh, don't spoil it. <laughs> Remember you had the jaguar and the croc, Dean, and mm -hmm. you were you were just in awe of the incredible the power, the yeah. jaw, the, the vice-like grip, the clamp that the jaguar had. Well, I mean, there's more nature out there to just be in awe. Of. <laughs> Village Honda presents the Pinder Report, located in the Northwest Auto Mall and online at villagehonda.com. It's as though Honda designed the CRV for Calgary and its unpredictable weather. No matter what the conditions, the CRV sits atop the pack among compact SUVs. You'll feel confident behind the wheel of your CRV, as Honda has included a plethora of driver safety features that come standard. You got to drive the CRV to believe it, and you can do that at Village Honda. Northwest Automobile, your dealership for life presents. Ryan Pinder. Ryan Pinder. Ryan Pinder. The Pinder report thank you dean welcome on this wonderful monday and a beautiful beautiful weekend in the inverse standings let's start with afterburner last night yes cammy and kent i believe i yeah, just wonder I what they are playing for right now yeah just pride i did look at the money puck probabilities in the middle of the game i think they're down to 0 0.3 percent of the chance of making the playoffs so <laughs> There's a chance, but it's not plausible. So it's a lot of the kids are going to play hard no matter what, because they're always trying to establish themselves. It's part of the reason I'd actually like to see Coronado get back in the lineup, because if he's going to be on the parent squad, let's get him some ice and see what he can do. Yeah, because it's just frustrating to see him in the box, especially when there's rumors floating around that Andre Kuzmenko not be playing at 100% health, which at that point's like, all right, we don't really know what the future is there. Why do we want to risk having that asset get further injured when... This guy is just itching for more practice at this level, and he's sitting in the box. And we have a Jacob Peltier who's down with the AHL squad and had a goal and two assists tonight. Yeah, I mean, if someone like Kuzmenko is playing through something, let's get the kid in there, see what he can do. He's like a peacock. You got to let him fly. <laughs> <laughs>
I just, I'm so proud of the whole crew. Cammy, Kent, RJ. I mean, Peacock, let him fly. Not Jack. I uh, Jack was not as integral in making of that clip, but oh, I'm sure it was a well-produced show last night. Jack? There's a lot of baggage with Jack, too. He was very, very, very distraught over that Penguins collapse yesterday. Ruin your weekend or no? Yeah, it wasn't great. <laughs> he just <laughs> fires Sullivan into the sun. He's just done with them. <laughs> it's like it's Matt Canada coaching the freaking Penguins. Are you literally hanging on for the hopes that they're going to make it? Like, what's well, wrong? Uh, ah, it's over now. Yeah. Oh, now. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, it's like the Flames. If that was the dagger. There it is. Sunday daggers. That was That's the, the theme dagger. today. <laughs> Why don't we start with that theme? Inverse standings, baby. Whoa, did we have a day. See that line, Dean? That is top 10. We are in there. Oh, baby. Come to daddy. Lottery balls. Yeah. Buffalo, victory. New Jersey, victory. Pittsburgh, loser point. There's room to move here, fellas. Could you even dream of top eight? Oh, boy. Here we go. I'm just saying. There's a band here they can finish. I don't think you can catch the Sens. Certainly, you could get past Buffalo and New Jersey. Um, that sort of le- means you're picking eight to 12. Can we live with that? Boy, that Seattle sitting at 25 there looks real good. Seattle's been shit. They've lost eight in a row or something now. How could they dialed in right now, Rhett? Hey, like that's how you do this, fellas. Ronnie Francis is a winner. I mean, Ronnie this guy... Francis knows what's up. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I think the Flames are finding their their whatever their stride. <laughs> that's the yeah. word. They're finding their stride. It is set in. They're not making it, and they don't. It's what? I got to play tonight, but we're what? And they're still playing veteran guys, which is great because they don't give a shit. They're not going to go the extra mile at all. It's we bitched about how they not playing the kids. We're idiots. These guys know exactly. Let's bring up more vets. Checkers, not chess, fellas. That's what Conroy's yelling at the screen right now. You <laughs> dummies. Exactly give, what we're doing. Give Miramanov off the power play. Put a veteran in there. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Although, in fairness, Miramanov had zero shots yesterday, oh. despite being on the power play. So maybe mm-hmm. they do, you're, like you say, maybe they're very dialed in on what needs oh. to be done. I, honestly, I mean, I just keep thinking where we were in November 1. How bleeping miserable is this year going to be? And since then, it's actually probably been best case scenario. Hey, great. I've had a it's lot fun. of fun this year. Hardly said the F word at about the team. That's right. Mm-hmm. He's hardly said the F word about the team. I can't wait until there's all this, oh, the inverse standings that get a higher draft pick and then draft day comes and Conrad drafts, trades down twice to get some extra seconds and thirds. It's like, well, at 27. Wait, maybe we can get Tej at, uh, at 15, at 13, he gets drafted. Oh, darn it. Well, you know, trade the, down uh, again, I guess. The, the real funny, like if Connie's been on the job, what, like nine months on my end? What's he collected more of than anything else? Like we know he's going to draft Russian, Russian defense, defense, right? <laughs> How many how many translators are we gonna have in the building next year? Like, can Makarov come back and help the crew? What are we doing here with the alumni? Anyway, um, they're top ten today. It's very close, and top nine is even more incentive. Dean, I believe the top nine are the teams that can actually get all the way up to first for lottery. So well, let's go. <sighs> dialed in. Check is uh, not chess. The other standings look a little like this. It is the Western Conference wild card. Nashville, same number of points as Edmonton. Like games played aren't even, but that's a heater. And they now have a point streak longer than Edmonton. They had a 16 game winning streak. Nashville's at 17 for points. Goodness. And that Vegas just went around and our first becomes a second. Um, <laughs> damn it. They might have Colorado in round one. <laughs> yeah. Not ideal. If they could pass LA and get Edmonton, do we like that more? Maybe. Uh, but the, again, Vegas isn't going to really Vegas until we're into the playoffs and everyone's healthy, right? Yeah, if it's Colorado, dude, it may not. I, you don't want Colorado at all. There's this maybe. Yeah, I don't know what you want. Don't do it. Don't do it, indeed. Don't do it. Okay. Schedule looks like this, fellers. What do we got? Oh, yeah. It's the trip through the Midwest that nearly broke this team last year. 
I remember doing an afterburner with Rhett where they went through St. Louis and Chicago. They blew a two goal lead late in the third in St. Louis. That game was absolutely in cruise control. They had two points locked in and then they went and soiled themselves in Chicago. And it was like, what the hell is going on here? Welcome back to that one. Chicago side the number four wins their last five against the Flames and Bedard back this time. He didn't play yeah. last time. Uh, yeah, Bedard did not play in Calgary this year, if I'm correct. That's he, right. First game of the year in Chicago, but not in Calgary. And now back with the bubble. When's he losing the bubble? He's been, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Come on, bubble boy. Let's go. So that's your schedule, Rhett. Uh, we talked about it with uh, Frank. Look at the, or before Frank, look at the top of the league. Like this, you want. You, you want to feel like there's lots of teams that could win a cup? Everyone on that list thinks they can win a cup. I don't know how to feel about Vancouver. I keep waiting for them to stub their toe, and they don't. And it's I they probably got the Rodney Dangerfield vibes right now. Like, everyone's talking more about... more impressive, though? Like, all these teams are impressive, clearly. Yeah, no, they're the most. Maybe but, Boston after losing Bergeron Krejci, but yeah. Vancouver, no one saw this. Nobody. No. Like, they're... No. Like, wh how, where are we at on these guys? Is it like well, and the, again, is like, ah, they'll stub their toe. They've never really done this before. They play tonight, and it's a combination of things. But uh, I think it's a Vegas loss and a Vancouver win. They can be the first to officially qualify. I would not have guessed wow. that Vancouver would be the first one in. Now, they're all going to get in, obviously. But right, right. it's it's the, they they lost Demko, continue to win. There, There's just, there's been any number yeah. of, you know, right? They, that you're keeping pace with these teams. It's it, and we watched the game the other night. I didn't think they were any no screaming hell. No, but it also never felt like the Flames are really threatening no. that much either, right? And that's maybe the sign of a good team. They won ugly, and it wasn't really that hard for them, yeah. was it? Well, they came out of the blocks and owned them for the first shift. It almost seemed like if they wanted to play hard, they could take over. Yeah, it did, right? It, I was saying we were at the bar that I was like that first goal was almost like Henrik Daniel esque. <laughs> tick tack backdoor tap in mm -hmm. wide open holy shit and they'd already had three chances in the God. first 20 seconds they scored uh first shot he's gone in two games in a row against the flames as well one on march from saturday one on uh wolf last so week. good Wait. hey well done boy that's uh hey you know what just uh first one in and then play as hard as you can guys okay that's just the one and move move your arms really fast when you're skating because it looks like you're working harder. That's right. Yeah, like pretend that you're chasing the puck for that you know is going to be icing. Yeah. That that kind of vibe, right? Yeah. Uh, snipers are sniping. Let's go to a busy weekend for Milestone. Sammy Reinhardt, fifty. Congrats on your UFA uh, Brinks truck. Well done. Like well done. You can do whatever you want now, Sammy. You can stay in Florida and continue to win. Uh, you can go ask someone for. 12 plus million dollars anywhere else in the league. Like really do what you want. It's up to you, bud. You've earned it. Thanks. Sweet there. boy. They got Montour to sign too, though. How did he get so good? And the other two brothers, like the brothers. just. Uh, yeah, no. he was definitely the best. It, Griffin just needed a chance. It's true. Yeah, Edmonton gave him one. That didn't go so well. Oof. Well, it was in Edmonton. There's no, that's not hockey. A real chance. A real chance with a real team. Uh, okay. What else we got? We got another 50 goal guy. Holy shit. Zach Hyman. There you go. Okay. Almost double the McDavid goal total. Did not have that on the bingo card. And, uh, yeah, he's on the receiving end of a lot of those, but, uh, I don't know that anyone ever thought this guy would get to 50. He's, you said it Dean 31. Is that right? He's 31. He was a fifth Ooh. round pick of the Florida Panthers in 2010. Jeez. And all his goals, they show the heat map on Oilers games all the time, Rhett. It's basically like the location you would press a doorbell from. Like everything's on the mat in front. There's like one from distance and 49. There's a lesson the for all you loser kids and parents out there. Yeah, like loser kids and parents. Recognize that if you have a role, just that's stick to that. You could, there's great success to be had by playing a role. So is this the modern-day Tim Kerr or uh, Dino yeah. Cicerelli? Yeah. How about I'm going to – I got I got this guy I'm playing with. This, he's not bad. It's gonna, it's, I guess I'll go to the net maybe and put my stick down and, I don't know, see what happens. Yeah. All right. People are going to touch me there and, and put their arms and stick and, and push me. I might have to deal with that. Yeah. I'm going to make millions and millions, though, if I do it right. Okay. Now, would he have turned down money to go to Edmonton? No, he took the most right term and dollars. Oh, yeah, because it was it was the it was 
Because he wasn't years. even put in that spot. Well, maybe I I recognize the that's spot the, here, so I'll take less. But no, Edmonton said, this is a great spot for you, and we're going to give you the most money. That's the best part about what the Oilers have accomplished is the fact that, aside from maybe Dreisaitl, who at the time, is, they do have a great contract there. And he, so their top two players, the guys that are behind the bus and driving, and yeah. they've taken a deal to stay in Edmonton and help the team win. The rest of the squad overpaid. Overpaid. Yeah. <laughs> Pay him to come. Well, and Hyman has been a value deal, but on that July 1st or whatever it was, it's 31 not a value other GMs deal wouldn't because go because he's there, been right? successful. Exactly. And he's not going to be 50 goal guy playing with uh, Huberto. Like, sorry. No. He's a 50 goal guy. Let's recognize who totally. good for him. It's all McDavid. And McDavid and Dreisaitl both taking a haircut to play in Edmonton and everyone yeah. else getting full pop. So they make about $21 million combined, 8.5 and, and 12.5, and if I'm correct. I think their next contracts, whether they're the same team or whatever, like if they want something close to market, it's $30 million. Yeah. And they had a chance to go along with Bouchard. They bridge him. He's like, well, I'm I'm going to be an 80-point defenseman. That's that's ten, eleven million in a couple of years. So. Well, especially when you watch Ooh. Nurse and you're like, F He's not in a quarter. I'm way better than that clown. Yeah. Although there were some highlights in that Toronto game that would suggest that Bouchard was not a ten or eleven million dollar. Well, well and you like know what? Nurse. He's he's a Carlson more than he's a uh, Tanev, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what, Red? As a defenseman, you would have you would have appreciated how he, as first man back to, on the puck, got out of the way so the four checker could come in and grab that puck. Well, you don't want to get hit, Dean. You don't right? want to get hit. It's chance of injury. You can't. I can't play eighty two games if I'm injured. Are coming. Yeah, come on, that's right. Focus on the right stuff. Oh, for Ontario, that's a rough one for the oil. Uh, okay, let's go to games tonight. It is uh, two non Flames games, Dean, and that is it. That's all. Is that how this is going to be? You're, like, just every day, we can change it. I just we're going to refer to like this thing is going to you got a kick out of it for a while. I think this means the joke's dead now. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, I love beating a, a, a dead horse for sure. Well, okay, so the horse is dead. We're moving on. I wasn't even sure what the joke was at the at the start. <laughs> I just kept miscounting them, and you were pointing it out. Right, yeah, and that's <laughs> that was the joke. Are we? Uh, is St. Louis got a sniff still here? Like, let's say they beat Vegas tonight. Is there? They believe they do. Yeah. So they are Isn't four they... back, and they've played one more game. They could get the gap to two tonight. Four back of Vegas. Now, again, you asked this question last week. If Vegas doesn't make the playoffs, can they still win that first-round series to turn the pick to a second for the Flames? Well, you know what? I, I'm Have glad you, you brought did, it up. This did you morning, get a call back on that? I, I came in. I, I wanted to get some stuff, and I did. I looked at a bunch of stuff. I was writing numbers down. It's, it's going to be very difficult for them to win that first-round series mm -hmm. if they don't make the playoffs. Uh, it's near 0%. So it's kind of like uh, the Flames' ability to, get to the second round if they miss would be if also... they miss, yeah, an Oilers Flames second round series nearly impossible. Huh. Well, we'll have to stay tuned Shit. on that. Yeah, Call well, you know, lots of season to unfold. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we had a goalie fight, I believe, in the Western League. Let's go. Yes, Ooh, anytime shot. we will show it. Nine one, holy s! Did they miss Bedard there or what? <laughs> Oh, goodness. Lefty. Eight left. A lot of flow on these two cats, too, isn't there? Yeah. Hunger, lefty. Dangerous. Oh, lefties, man. Give, give that Pat's goalie credit. He hung in there. That's Pike Bomb. Is that Pike? Brian Pike hanging in there, yeah. Where's that T-shirt? We need to make get that T-shirt made. You think they like that? Oh, he got the belt. Oh, he's got, oh, the, he's belt got the belt. He does too. Yeah, yeah. Hunger for more. <laughs> Love it. Well done, sir. We don't condone violence. In That's a tough way to go out. Hockey. Apparently, that was the last game of the year for the Pats with an 11 1 loss. And uh... Well, that is the way to go out if you're the goalie. You're like, fuck this. I'll scrap. Imagine like hot this water. Your 20 season. Like, That's it. I went out. I'm good. I have nothing left to do in this sport. Yeah. How about those blades, though, Retro? Good this year, boys. 12,000. What? Game on Saturday night. First place, 
Holy. Regular you might season be champs. Breaking even with, oh. if you bought that team. 12,000 is a nice round number for a uh, WHL Saturday night game. Yeah, the Thank books work well much. at 12,000. Not Imagine. very many, yeah, not very many venues hosting 12,000. Yeah, what? You got uh, Calgary Edmonton? That's it? Probably. Probably. I don't Impressive. know what Vancouver. Now nah, they moved to that Langley Event Center. That's 5K. Okay. Let's go. Sweet 16, March Madness. We have our teams. How about this? All the ones and twos are through. Very rare. A chalky bracket. Eh? I don't know what that means. That just means the favorites are winning a lot. Oh, yeah. That. Walker would have taught you that, right, Boom? Oh, I just right. the yeah. chalk and the, the sharps. And the... Playing a lot of chalk. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to our pool. What do we got in the leaderboard there? Let's get some names here. Uh, good to see <sighs> the plural word for octopus and Buford T. Justice there in the top 10 and head cheese vomit also tied for fifth. So yeah, good to see good some job. funny names in there. Did you scroll down to see which staff members leading boss, boss, Jack, boss, man, Jack? I haven't. I did not. I believe it was you. I think it's yeah, it was on Friday. That was a long time ago. Yeah, Maybe I put your ones and two seeds through. Boss. I'm disappointed because I put a lot of research and work into it. Mm -hmm. A lot I of people like, just yeah. go in and just boop, 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 boop on their phone so they get it in ahead of time. Well, you must have big Saturday Sundays. We haven't checked since then because if Man, you did the homework, I'm sure you're all over this thing. Yeah. Kentucky was, hurt. Kentucky, I lost them. It was a uh, uh, rough one. I think everyone would have lost Kentucky, though. Was that the Oakland or yeah. was that someone else? Uh, was it Vaclav Verata you said, Red? You said, yeah. oh, I can't do this. I don't know any of these teams. Mm -hmm. Can't play. I, I, don't, I can't do the bracket. I don't even, all the I haven't teams. even heard of these. I don't know what kind of <laughs> offense they're running at Duke this year. I can't do my bracket. <laughs> they got the triangle there and Creighton. What are do? they doing? Coach at Auburn, and I, I, I'm not sure. I, yeah, no, I can't. Yeah, I, actually, I need to do a little work. See who's eligible for the draft. Who's distracted? I haven't done. I haven't finished that yet. So I'm going to decline the bracket this year. It's twenty bucks. I mean, come on. What are you now, doing? story. Of the week in the world of sports, and it's kind of getting a little swept under the rug in a weird way. Um, the greatest baseball player maybe ever just happened to wire four and a half million dollars to a bookie, not a legal one, in the state of California. Oops. Bad now, advice. This Bad is where advice. things get a little more confusing because at first he said, No, 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 no. My interpreter, he owed some dough, so I was just covering him. And then the lawyers came and said, no, 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 no. We, uh, we're retracting that statement. Four and a half million dollars has been stolen from Shohei. He will speak today. Interpreter. Yes. And, and you know what? If I'm, I have, it's been a long time since I was a bookie, but luckily we, Jack's in the room. He is a bookie. Uh, sorry to blow your cover. Now let's say you got a guy making between, let's call it a hundred grand and 300 grand. How much money would you let him lose before you stop letting him bet? Like how much do you think you'd go? Like it's, let's say he makes 200 a year, just round number. Would you let him get to four and a half million probably in debt? Probably not. Yeah. Not a, and so that's debt, Jack yeah. a bookie. Uh, I'm not a bookie. It just, I, I wondered about that. How is a guy that makes like 100, 200 grand going to pay back four and a half million dollars? Why'd you keep? What the hell's going on here? Rhett, help. Sweet. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. I can I don't know if I'm the one to help. Did you have any, uh, Teammates that like to bet millions of dollars on other I sports. I don't know bookies. what's going on here. Dean. That's Pete the Rose juice. is like public when enemy juice, number one. What are we doing here? Where we were talking about that. The vig and the juice and the when the juice is running, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, not ideal. Not ideal. So uh, who is this guy? Is this like his friend or is he just like... Well, I think he's he's clearly the interpreter and... I'd hope you get along with your interpreter. Uh, and is he the best guy ever? Or is he, is this guy taking the fall for him? I have no idea. It's weird, guys. I've got a bit of a gambling problem. <laughs> Listen, I didn't have a jockey bracket. I owe some money. How'd you like to be dead? <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what the uh, Jack said to the interpreter. So yeah. sure I came in and saved the day. That can happen. Now, here's the thing. Maybe it's been right in front of us this whole time, and we just weren't paying attention. There it is. That's lame. <laughs> that is 
That's really... It's better than the last Jersey bit you put on the show. <laughs> I don't remember that one. There was another pitch in there. Yeah. Kelsey hurts. <laughs> I mean, it's possible, I guess. Does he mean to? Yeah, I believe it was uh, Grady Dick of the... Uh, oh, that's right. Kelsey. Yeah, somebody little was on Twitter saying, why is this Grady yeah. guy who keep reaching out for photos? <laughs> move on, Ryan. I know you're dying to dig deeper. Just move on. Let us get back to Saturday night. What a great time at Greta. I want to say a big thank you to the folks at Greta, the staff, McLeod Law, uh, Village Honda, of course, presenting sponsor of the Pin Report. Easter Seals, our sponsor, we supported. And uh, look at that, our old pals, Dino. We're, look how happy we are. Yeah. Bunch of fun guys. Hey, Red. Yeah, your eyes look like they're fun guys. <laughs> they are a lot of fun. <laughs> Why great turnout. Me? Do you want to share the conversation we had right when you were getting ready to leave? I don't uh, recall that. You had a babysitter, that. right? You had the babysitter. Let's uh, let's just uh, stay on task here, oh, Dean. Yeah, Sorry. Thanks enough. very much for that. Uh, what else did I want to say? Ryan Pike was there. Uh, Pike Bomb sold out of books. Sold out of books, Retro. Proud of him. And then uh, went home and wrote an article about the <laughs> about the game. The guy's an animal. There it is. Sold out of books. Close on to right. The yes. Behind the scenes with the Calgary Flames at the NHL draft, Ryan Pike, Flames Nation, put together this book. You can grab it wherever. Books, uh, whatever but you do with books. Get books online yeah, where or at stores. Jack, where do you buy books? <laughs> when the Jack book is? truck comes around, just wave them down. Hey, Mr. Library. Book, Mr. Book Truck Driver. Is that the, is he like the milkman, the garbage man, or the ice cream guy? They, they play books music they do, yeah. and people come out of the house. Yeah. Ah, oh, books, books, Stop. How sad is it that, like, I loved books growing up, and that was a big deal on Wednesday when the book truck would park the book between truck. the schools. Wow. See, Ryan thinks we're joking. Small I, town, you, book truck. I've seen, like, mobile libraries that would go to schools, so you're saying the town had one of those. Similar. Like, Similar, go to yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a big day. Mm -hmm. Books. I think the screens have killed the books, right? Screens have definitely. I've been doing a lot of digging into this, folks, in the off season. When times go get a little quieter, we're gonna have a real an expose. I think they're. Called. Oh no! Yeah, we're gonna have an expose. Well, I just hope. Uh, Steve so we need Jobs to contact enough time to sub to brace for this. We better contact our legal department. Yes, yes, yeah, seriously, for, sure. for yeah. shizzle. Have them on. Uh, for shizzle. Have them on warning. Well, yeah, and you did mention <sighs> that uh, they could help in contract resolution so when yep. we get shit canned mm -hmm. yes do we have them on retainer yet by or? jack when yeah. jack yeah, jack yeah. fires us yeah said we've been slandering his uh his lack of literacy on the show too many times he's gonna chase us for damages <laughs> okay sorry guys we've wasted too much time let's get to the dumb shit uh rhett's been training and do you remember that guy that was, uh, he got the world record by falling on the, the pine the nut, two by yeah, fours? Yeah, buster. So how do you train for that? Well, Rhett, it's getting ready. It looks nice in Buffalo too, doesn't it? You got to get pumped up. Oh! It's going to be Pinder's wife when she gets back. <laughs> Potentially. Sees the shape the house is in. I mean, if I'm well-behaved, maybe. Hey, Mom, we ate mac and cheese and pizza pops for 12 straight days. <laughs> <laughs> now, remember last week, Rhett had got the shovel or a dirt bike, and it was way too much, way too soon. Too much bike, too big of a jump, didn't go well. So, Rhett, you had to take over. Sure, what's up? Now, you put on, I think, an America cape here, and I'm, I'm proud of you. You're, you're ripping it up here. It looks like a race of some sort. Oh, uh, so the cape is flapping if you pay attention here. And then I yeah. think does it get stuck right in right the wheel, in, Rhett? In the chain, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. And that's uh that's a horse tackle. That's 15 yards. That is a horse. Yeah. horse <laughs> that's horse collar for sure. Horse tackle. It's our horse collar. <laughs> uh, now there was snow last week in Buffalo, and Rhett and some of the Bills Mafia were out there training because it never stops when you're part of Bills Mafia. You don't turn it off and on. It's a right. life thing. It's like a tattoo. That thing's there forever. And so even in the winter, let's go. Oh, Seagulls, no. Seagulls. Sounds really Seagulls. upset. That's your boy Seagulls, hey? Oh, yeah. Seagulls, no. 
Uh, what do we say about teenage boys? Dumb. Yeah. Dumb. Dean? Dumb. Dumb. Oh, no. It looks like my house. Oh, no. See, this is Rhett's one of your that kids, right? So going down is easy, right? Hmm. A little I harder. Have done this. I have the exact same style of staircase. Now watch his left foot here, Retro. No. No. Oh, no. Uh, no. Yeah, that's... Thanks, Dad. Damn. Thanks, Dad. Now, the other thing about teenagers, though, is they're, they're kind of like babies. They're made out of rubber. Like, thought he was in big trouble. Apparently, fine the next day. Laced up. Good for him. Sure. Hmm. That looked like a compound fracture. Now, Dean, you always joke about when you went uh, to our pals at Hearing Loss Center, and they're pulling out old boots and change and yeah. old... Found a whole bunch of stuff up in there. Old keys and stuff. Yeah, license plates. Yeah. How did you how did they get it out? Because this is a technique I haven't seen before. Let's have a look. Um oh, the top of the come on. So I think this is like peroxide or something. Why do you think it's gonna bubble? Because it bubbles when you put it on blood. No, it bubbles when you put it on earwax. Oh, it, does it does? Yep. Mm. Ah shit, that's cold. No, it doesn't feel mm -mm. Yeah. It came out. I told you. What came out? It's a fucking spider. Oh, oh there's shit. Yeah, it's look. a spider. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that would come out. That's fucking disgusting. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking disgusting. What are you doing with the scrub oh brush? It's let go of me. Why do you have more bugs? It's quite a session they had there. Wow. Yeah, scrub what are you doing with out, eh? the scrub brush? They had a broom. You're like, yeah, I couldn't get it out with that either. That's the that's their toothbrush. <laughs> oh god. There's a lizard in there? What? Fucking hillbillies. Uh to the Australia portion of the program, yes. the things we think might be in Australia. Uh, this is Ozzy Brad's drunk brother. Let's check in. There's a fucking fire in the fucking freezer, mate. <laughs> Fire and ice cunts. Yeah. See, I had that clip a long time ago, and it's like, no, I can't, I can't under conscious do this because I, I, I don't like the C bombs. I can't provide a clip that's got a C bomb in it. Right. Well, that's, you're saving it. There's a Thunderbolt. fire in the fridge, mate. There's a fucking fire in the fucking freezer, mate. <laughs> fire and ice cunts. Yeah. <laughs> And what is that clip? There's a labeled? fire in the freezer. Fire and ice. See you next in the Northern Territory. Yeah, sure. Um, all right, crocodile portion. Let's go. Where are we at here? This We, we either go, yeah, this is back to our boy Matt in uh, the Northern Territory. See you there. This croc is a rescue. He's lost like the top half of his jaw. Apparently very difficult to feed. Let's have a watch. Oh, you're kidding me. All right. This is the hardest croc to feed. He's gone round and round and round. He's been out the pen. He's come back in. Now we're just trying to get him. So, can you jack that other bit of meat, please, Josh? Always oh, busy, yeah, this man. Yeah, you're up. Grab it. He's got lots of... They're huge. Uh, throw it to me. Oh, yeah, I want him that one. Yep, throw it. All right, come on, mate. Round it's three. Here we pass. go. Get it in your mouth. Come on. You don't want to get too close. That's we the got challenge. That. We here, got right? it. Oh. There you Jesus. go. Yes. That was an effort, mate. That was an effort. Oof. Finally. Got that in his mouth. Held under by. It's looking good. It's looking happy. Swallow him down, mate. Yeah, it looks great. Oh, boy. There we go. Uh, look at the size of him. Look at that, mate. Look at him. Those are like his pets. I. I we got to visit this guy. I thought Ozzy Brad was the visit. Now I think we got to go to the Northern Territory. When do you kill one of them? Like, when is it <laughs> humane just to what kill do it? you kill? Right? Like, horse, no, breaks its, horse breaks its leg, you put it down. <laughs> Crocodile yeah. loses half of its goddamn head. You finish eighth, you might get the... <laughs> he has a heck of a time eating this one. Well, yeah, it's because <laughs> his fucking head's cut in half. Still live him. Boots, make some boots. So, Dean, if you lose the top half of your mouth, we can keep feeding you. It might not if, be pretty. If you we'll get keep locked you alive. off from here north. Yeah, lights out. Do you want to keep you alive? No. 
I barely want to be alive now. DNR. He's got a tattoo on his chest. <laughs> my forehead, my chest. DNR. No. Stop. So just Stop for sign. DNR. Jack's new here. The boss didn't work at the old spot. You used to have a policy. If you ever go down, don't say no it. mouth to mouth. <laughs> don't do it. And it was also the other way. So if you went down, I was not giving you mouth to mouth. Well, so we knew it that. was, yeah. you know, was yeah. two way street. Uh, check out the size of this croc. This is in Africa, I believe, not Australia. Like, look it's at this. Of this. It's whacking him on the nose. What are we doing here? Oh, dude needs Again, to this this croc did not come into this gentleman's living room. It's the exact opposite. Got to lay off the card. Oh, shit. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that is horrifying. Look at it. And there's no way to appreciate how big that is. Looking at this video, look look at the size of the man. Yes. Let's assume he like is at least 20 feet. feet tall. Yeah. The thing's jaw is like from his foot to his hip. Oh, my God. Uh, last one. What? What's that exhale about? I just don't even know what it is we're doing. <laughs> this we do get We're off. just showing pictures of crocodiles that are big. There are full channels that are just focused on nature, Dean. We love nature. Okay. Rat, you love nature? Absolutely. You do those science, channels, Rhett? do they start showing Flames power plays? <laughs> they wouldn't. Inverse they wouldn't standings? <laughs> right? How could you subject people to that, Dean? How could you let them watch the Flames power play? You, you, your stomach might turn. It would be appalling. Like Viewers does, wouldn't be able to survive it. Like so planet instead, Earth. Does planet instead, Earth show you stop showing videos and then show a goalie fight from Regina? Oh, the Flames and scored. Now, apparently this is a Burmese python, which is an invasive species in Florida, Red. I know you've been thinking about like moving them. to Florida. Look at the size of this thing. No, I like snakes uh -oh. less than alligators. So look at the size of that snake. And that's just a piece of it. Come on. What? Well, it's nice and dead now. So. Yeah, it's quite dead. They've cut it open. It's not alive, Dean. What's in there, though? Uh, hmm. Is that a scalpel? Oh, it was just a um, crocodile inside the. Just a six foot croc. Yeah. Yeah. As many as 90 units on site pre owned and access to hundreds more in their dealer group, Dean. Village Honda and your Monday Pinder report. VillageHonda.com, Northwest Auto Mall. Pre owned, new service. Village Honda. Here's Good question call. in the comments as well. Is that like turducken or do we need another animal in the croc? <laughs> yeah, I think you need one more. What would you put in the croc? <laughs> Can you have like an iguana? What else do we like in the pinder? A rat? Oh, oh. No, we're rat free now. Any ideas, rat? What you, the, the hat trick for the... Well, there might be, that's where the, the, the chicken part comes. Chicken. Which part? Chicken. 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 It's Monday. It's time for another round of Wendy's mm -hmm. and our survivor pool. Daily face-off and Wendy's hooking up for the, uh, and you, here's the thing. Go to daily face-off if you haven't already. I know there's a month left. There's still time to get some points, to get real food from Wendy's and the Wendy's app. Dailyfaceoff.com, top right corner, you'll find the link. You click, make yourself a, uh, whatever you call it, a profile. Yeah. If you've already done it, log in, get ready for a new week. And with Wendy's, the only thing sweeter than the taste of victory is starting your day with the new Cinnabon pull-apart from Wendy's. What? Mm, Cinnabon. There's no reason you can't have both now that Wendy's and Daily Face-Off Fantasy are giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long. And hey, even if you make a few wrong picks, at least you know heading to Wendy's right now for a $5 Cinnabon pull-apart and a small coffee is a great choice. Mm. Five bucks. Cinnabon and coffee. I'm Sign up for Daily Face Off today, sponsored by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. Get that Wendy's app. You got to pick from 10 options again today, Dino. I like uh, the Quentin Byfield point. Let's do it. Okay. Only two games tonight. Yeah, yeah. You can pick uh, LA to win, Vancouver to win, St. Louis and Vegas. You got some goals and shot totals. Byfield over a point. Besser over a half goal. Interesting stuff there. 
March or so, three and a half shots. I, mean, I have an email, and I know we're not, we say we don't take uh, email. Yeah, we don't take questions. But it came into the Great Clips inbox, which we do on Fridays. But this one, it, well, the guy, he was kind of, you know, he's being nice about it, but he was like, this is for you know, today's show. Or whatever, oh. Kind of thing. Where the hell did I put it? Because I put it in, into the uh, in the old gray clips. Maybe it's still here. Yeah, this is from Bob Robert. Now you can choose to answer the questions, or you can say no. Okay. But this one came in. Hope all is well. Let's get to business for tomorrow's show. Pinder, of course, a Calgary native, opens the scoring. Peyton Krebs. Do you see Zegras as a fit in Calgary next year? If so, yes. If no, why not? No, because what do you have to get up, give up to get him? Yeah, and uh, I guess the question is more about do you like him as the player? I don't love the player because I, I don't think Pat Verbeek loves him. <laughs> and I think he's probably going to be a real good third, fourth best player on a team, but if he's anywhere near your best, I think you're in trouble. High, high end skill, but then when you start playing five on five hockey, yeah, right, it's but you love that skill. Right? I you like love... the skill when the skill's trying to win the games and not have social media hits. What's he got for points this year? Not enough, and I'm Played 20 games, he has seven points. Like, I, I don't, this is maybe the ultimate buy low opportunity. I think it's also just like, I want to know what the fuck's going on here before I unload a lot of assets to get this player. Now, you, it could be very much a buy low. It's got to be close. Yeah. Because even before this year and those disappointing numbers, he was seemingly on the outs. He had 23 goals last year, 23 goals the year before. This year, four and 20. Um, so injury is clearly a major yeah. issue here, but. More than that, uh, the, the character's been called into question, and that's not to say that he is or isn't something, but you don't see guys go backwards like this. Yeah. Like you're a 65 point player. That's pretty good. I guess. So, Red, you say no? Well, I, I, it's too easy. It's too loose a question, but yeah, no. I, I think they, even on a buy low, you're still trying to, you're going to be asked to give up a lot. But again, if you want. Walker Dewar for Zegras? Okay. <laughs> we can make that happen. No, they'd ask for the moon, wouldn't they? They'd want a first plus, I think. Yes. Wouldn't they? Yeah. Or at least a first. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And now, see there, he's from Bedford, New York. I wonder how close that is to Potsdam, New York. What if, like, yeah. I just, is Conroy going to have, is he in cahoots with this guy? Now, maybe you're just looking for reservations at LA restaurants. If that's the case, go get Trevor Zegras right now. That guy can get you anywhere. Bit of a playboy rat. Is he? So I'm told. Hmm. Sources. He is six hours from Buffalo. Bedford is just across. It's very close to the city. The city. Of Calgary? The city. I don't think Calgary's the city. <laughs> well, I was trying to figure out what the city is. Well, if you pick Cincinnati, New York, or? it's yeah. one of your favorite cities in the world, Dean. I know this. Got it. Have you backed off your New York is dead stance? You dropped that one, I think, uh, three years ago, Rhett. Because you've seen you're now on the outs of Chicago, which you used to love. New York is dead. What do you mean, like the city? Well, you said don't go there Ooh, anymore. There's New York's a lot dead. of trouble to be had. In years ago. Is it back on your good side, New York? Mm -mm. No. Because you've been going to Yankees games in you the summer. Can visit. Now. It's okay. it's it's not as friendly as a decade ago. I can tell you that. Mm. Okay. You're more of a fan of Rochester. It's been a lot of Rochester for I was in Rochester, Rochester today. Man, what a spot. What a what town. A Great you ever town. go to Pittsford? The Pittsford pub? Uh, the second part of this question. Boomer, what the f is with Man Japani? Why has he slipped so under the radar with everyone? Man, we talked about this already. Yeah, we kind of talked about it earlier in the show. I don't think he slipped under the radar. I just think his performance has slipped. Is just in general. And he's been passed by by some younger guys. I'll say this. If you were having a season, as I mean, I mean the Flames, and they were close, say like St. Louis' Louis spot. Yeah, yeah like points out if you flipping yeah. mad. 
Totally. Right? Like, get your head out of your hoop yeah. here, kid. We're going to need some production. I'm with you on the change of scenery thing with him. Like, I think he's a great guy. I just think all of a sudden it's it's the wrong time for him to be here. Like, he needs to be on a contending club on a third line. They need to be looking at kids here. He's got one year left. What are you going to accomplish in one year? Like, if you can get a third with no retention or more than that with some retention, I think you got to do it this summer because you just need spots for players. You take a third. If I'm not saying you're wrong. I just said no. If you took all the money, absolutely. I just don't think that's no one's going to give 5.8 no, for that. You're right. So that's so it's got to be a second plus or a third plus for some retention. Like, but yeah, just to get that six million for one yeah. year. So third seems fair. I don't know if anyone would even do that. Who's got the room for that? Yeah, darn. Um. Oh, and he just and then he kind of doubles down. He's like other players who make the same amount of money, but Schnabich, Trocheck, Kempe. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Rhett Sonos, ah. what is your go to broccoli cheddar soup recipe, or do you uh, to or to go with it, or also? Oh boy, That's this a is a lot here. Are you ready? Uh, this is what they call a run on sentence what is your go-to broccoli cheddar soup recipe or go-to with it also why the f do the d-men on the flames team resort to backhand so much in the d zone is that something in pro that matters as much did you teach your d this year to make more forehand plays or does it matter it looks like it stretches them and the forwards out too much then slows them down and the d can never activate as a fourth wave kind of a five-parter there uh, yeah, I faded halfway through that sentence. Sorry. Broccoli I cheddar. Don't, soup? I don't make broccoli cheddar soup. I purchase it. I don't. Uh, the the enjoyment from the rest of the household may, means making it for myself is not worth it. Uh, and then as far as the teaching, my it, it, when you have young kids, oh, get it on your forehand because you're the shits on your backhand. But there becomes a point where the child or player has to be able to make a backhand pass because that's the play. And if they never work on it and try it, mm -hmm. then they're effed. Like, they have to be able to do it. So did I teach them to do it? No. But I certainly don't preach get it on your forehand to, to make a play. At the NHL level, the Flames D could use their forehand, backhand, ass, head, elbow. I don't care. They should be able to make a play. Papa don't preach. No, well, I preach. Rep played his offside. He loves the backhand. Love the backhand. Used to love playing my offside too because the hooking was just oh, so good. That was the good Back stuff. Right here, there. buddy. Hey, Bucko. Hey, where bucko. are you going? Where are you off to right now? What it sound? What sound did it make when you laid the hook in? Right, a screech. Yeah. Uh, and this one's for Jack. This just says Jack. You are a good boss. That is all. Oh, appreciate yeah, it. I set that in, Jack. Yeah. Thanks, Rhett. You're welcome, buddy. So Jack is our boss. Hmm. Oh, okay. And then at the end, it says, Pike and Cammy are cool, too. All the best. Wow. That's a really rosy yeah. email. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's how I was feeling. Do you remember when someone at uh, the old place would tell you something really nice about the show and go on and on and gush and gush and gush? And what would you say, Dean? Yeah, shut up, Robert. Um couple things to do before we go we'll do some betway bets betway get the betway app but more importantly for a limited for just a short amount of I just do it look at it with betway you can get a free bet of up to 200 dollars if your first bet loses create a new account scan the qr code on the screen redeem your bonus place a bet no minimum amount required if the bet loses you'll get a refund of up to 200 dollars which you can then use to bet again on your favorite sports. This wow. offer only available outside of Ontario. So get that QR code. Get it going. Why would get it? You? Get it. Uh, here's uh, only two games tonight. Dipping a toe in each of them. Yes. Jake Neighbors, a point tonight for St. Louis. They are at home to the Vegas Golden Knights. Gets you plus 100. Old Jake has five goals and two helpers. Seven points in his last six games. Let's keep her going, Jake. One point plus money. I like it. And in the pre-built bet category for LA Vancouver, uh -huh. a Vancouver money line win and a Pedersen point plus 125. I like that. Yeah. 
Two games. I got something for each of them. Uh, NHL VGK. <laughs> Whatever that is. I, uh, uh, you're, that's a, he missed the space. I, I'm just uh, I like Because Jack is an idiot, and he makes some really dumb Well, he can't mistakes. read, so he doesn't yeah. know if he makes mistakes. He just types, and he doesn't get to edit because you can't read it. Uh, Shea Theodore. He's got seven assists in his last seven games. I like an assist. Jose Theodore, Ryan. Pardon me? You mean Jose Theodore. Right, Theodore. sure. Yeah, uh, that would pay more than minus 105 for Jose okay, yeah. to get an apple. Uh, Vegas defenseman, nice little run here. Points in six of his last seven. Seven assists in seven games. I like the assist. Near even money. And Kings Canucks, I definitely had Vancouver at minus 1.5. That's not my fault, not Jack's, but uh, Vancouver minus 1.5. That's the puck line is plus 185. Sorry, Jack. God damn it, Ryan. I know. That's confusing. First the snake duck and then now this. Yeah. Shea Theodore is a point per game this year. I guess he's been time. out a while too, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. 35 points in 35 games. Everyone's crushing baggers. Oh, like they've missed a lot of guys a lot of time this year. Yeah. You know what Daryl would say? It's too soft down there. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Is that right? Nice out. The boys like being hurt. Getting some to off. They fun. like being hurt. Too soft. Oh, yeah. baby. Get out of the training room. Enough yeah. mas- Everybody How did they massaged survive? and rubbed down in there. Yeah. Get out of here. How did they survive that incredibly pillow soft life to win the cup last year? Don't know. Mm-hmm. Overcome. You know why? Because they got a bunch of Canadians in there. Oh, a bunch of Manitoba boys, Dean. Yeah. They got a bunch of good. Canadian boys in there with Betway. You get that free bet up to 200. If your first bet loses, create the new account QR code on your screen, redeem the bonus. You place that bet. And if it loses, you get a refund of up to $200, which you can then use to bet on your favorite sports with Betway. This offer again, only available outside of Ontario, but bet the responsible way with our buddies, the official game partner of barn burner. It's Betway. You know, so that's Betway. yeah, yeah, uh, just if, uh, for people that were watching along with the show today, some, uh, some things coming up, will we be doing a book club during the summer? I'm in, I love books. Jack in for book club. Uh, I got to re- learn how to read first. Yeah. We'll start with Horton. The, Here's a who or listen, whatever it is. Just listen, you can listen to books now. Book burner. That's the different kind of thing. You don't spin want to it. Do, don't, don't need to change the book. logo a whole lot. We could Don't. just kind of spin off a little book burner. Don't and burn uh, it was, yes, it was the bookmobile. Hmm. It was the bookmobile. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's yeah. the hugger coming in, Rhett, for you. The old bookmobile. It's a big deal. I can still see. I can, I can see where it's parked right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Careful here. Croc. Launch the crock burner show. Ooh. But is that like your crock pot cooking show? Is that what we're That's talking right. about? Yeah. People are always wanting me in the kitchen. Yeah. And this was from Jerry just shortly before it began. Uh, get to the stage, uh, Jerry. You've got to change that avatar. <laughs> You're welcome, Jerry. There you go. <laughs> Again, we don't take questions, but uh, no, we don't. That's uh, that's what we do. Little DoorDash, two games tonight. Curious what's on the menu, but with DoorDash, does it really matter? Mm-hmm. S- sometimes I, sometimes you use DoorDash just because it's so convenient. I could make something, but. I'll tell you what was convenient, Dean. Last night when I used DoorDash for more Chipotle, oh. and it was here within 15 minutes. Yeah. So good. Boom! You, there's been a little too much Chipotle slander around these parts. Like, I'm not here to tell people it's the greatest restaurant in the world, but God damn it, if you're ever in a city that has one, it's just such an ad. I'll tell you, when you need it, it's there for you. It's See, amazing. and I feel like it's the other way around. I don't hear slander. I just hear gushing. Yeah. Oh, it's so and great. It we gotta either. go. We it's gotta, just gotta. the place. It was convenient. Billy Bob wanted some. He was a little hungry. Yeah. Maybe yeah. some Chipotle, Dad. You know what, son? I think we're going to do that. Yeah. I don't give a shit if it's 930 at night. You know what, Let's son? Really have to, the kids really have to twist Dad's arm to get some DoorDash in. I'm eh? proud of you, son. I'm <laughs> proud of you. You know what, Dad? What I was thinking. This one. DoorDash? Well, no, I was going to ask about, but yeah, if you're ordering. But now that you mention it. Uh... <laughs> Restaurants, groceries, pharmacies, bakeries, flower shops, you name it, it's DoorDash. Ordering's easy. 
You choose what you want from where you want, when you want it. It's left safely outside your door. And for a limited time, you, our listeners and viewers, can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. Download the DoorDash app, enter promo code NATION25, NATION25, to get that deal. So, with that in mind, what's on the menu for DoorDash tonight? All right. Oh, we got the two games. Vegas is at St. Louis. That's a 6 o'clock start. Uh, Where is it again? Sorry, it's not in Vegas. It's in... St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, yep. St. Louis. Boss. And the Los Angeles Kings in Vancouver, the left coast. Yeah. Where the pot smoke will be billowing out of Rogers that Arena. Shitty arena. Yeah, that seems just okay. Dump. Yeah. There you go. I told the guy that went, I said, well, you went to Seattle first, so the newest and best. Oh, God, that's the ben best arena in the world. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I went to SoFi Stadium. This McMahon Stadium isn't quite as nice. <laughs> you think? Uh, playing football, but aside from that, it almost feels like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. Dash that for the win mm-hmm. with yeah. DoorDash. Mm-hmm. Uh, so who are we? you're wanting St. Louis to win this thing? Are you still clinging to this Vegas winning a first round? getting a draft pick for the flames. I don't, need, I don't know if I need St. Louis to win because I think they're no. far enough ahead of the flames that we don't have to worry about that. And yeah. I'd rather have Vegas have the chance to. Yeah. If you could get Vegas into that three hole and pass LA and we get Vegas Edmonton. Anyone going to be upset with that? Like they might not win, but that's a series I'd watch again. Yeah. What's the, what's the hope there? What's the best It's not case? too bad. I mean, Vegas just has to get healthy and get going here. LA is at 85 points. Vegas is two back. Games are even. Yeah, like, boom. They could be almost tied tonight. They could be tied. If LA loses in Vancouver and Vegas wins, oh, my God. They're tied. We need it. (laughs) Very excited. Oh, right. All our standings. Very excited. Yeah. (gasps) No one gets more excited for a two-night sked on a Monday. Boys, do you know what? Then Ryan Pender. Do, do you know what? Uh, what is walking home to? First off, mountains of laundry. Mountains. Clean, but mountains nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Kitchen's okay. Fridge, barren. Cupboard's barren. And Blue Jays home opener? Season opener? Not home opener. Season opener? Thursday afternoon. Right. Oh, well, we you? saw that clip on uh, the start of the Pinder report. Uh, you getting hoofed in the nuts. Yeah, no, I thought you were talking about the fire in the fridge. That was yeah, hey, listen to me. There's a sign up on the screen. Why don't you get some groceries delivered? Oh, you can't get grown. Yeah, that's a great idea. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. What do you need? Well, it's spring break for the kids, so I need everything, DoorDash. I'm going to need a lot of groceries. But I, what do you uh, have? I mean, you guys probably, you'd probably don't eat bread or meat or dairy. Yep, or we do. So you need some bird seed. Delivered nope. some, some quinoa. essential grains. Yeah, no. Quinoa is good. They like quinoa. I guarantee yeah. you there's no, quinoa, quinoa here there. Some kelp. Get some uh, seaweed and some kelp brought uh, in. Soil. Rocks. Yeah. Bark. <laughs> yeah, and then you grind them down. There's probably some nutritional and, uh, value in there. Bugs. Yeah. 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 Now I dropped the kids off at, at camp today. Band uh, camp? No, outdoor camp. Oh, it's mi- minus 15. <laughs> kind of early. I was going to say, Jesus. <laughs> hey, there's no way you, you pack according to them either. Well, we've got a camp for you. <laughs> and I, uh, I've been pumping it up pretty good because they're just like, what? This you guys are like going to love it. Total hogwash. Like, dad, what are you talking about? This sounds yeah, We've seen your horse shit lies and come so, to fruition before. Don't oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. God, there's snow on the ground. We're so, going no, camping. Even better. Pull into a. You could call it a parking lot, but I would just call it one large snow drift. And um, it's an empty field with a foot of snow. Well, hopefully there's some. Okay, wind. guys, <laughs> I'll see you at four. <laughs> Daddy's got to go get high and drunk for the Blue Jay game today. Okay. That's Thursday. Today I had to work. I am aware. Of By the way, I think I need Thursday off. Uh, or okay. Friday. It's not a bad idea. Friday's a holiday. Why um, do you need Thursday off? What time's first pitch? I, don't, I, was, I was kidding. Friday, I definitely need. Well, he's got to get a spot, Dean. Well, I'm. I would be happy if Pinder did a drinky show on Thursday. 
yes. we could do maybe a Betway live stream, but I don't know that the Betway people want well, me. Well, don't need that. Pushing just, a pints and inning and a shot for every home run like I usually why? do on opening day. Well, I think they <laughs> I would love it. That. Yeah. <laughs> so if we, you know, if you started getting the uh, prime and the pump there during the show. Okay. I don't need priming. Games and are you know long. what, Pinder? You've earned it. You've earned it. You That's you're right. A savage. Two weeks of parenting. Yeah. All by myself. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks. They're 10 mm-hmm. years old. But I had two weeks with these fuckers. Do you know how many how times I that... had to put them in programming and sit in a pub? Like 14 times in two weeks. Yeah. And did, you, you know did it. I yeah. organizing it takes to get rid of two kids for two weeks. Oh. I got to find out which pubs are open early enough. This is really tough. And you did or didn't want to talk about the other night with the babysitter after the. Well, I sent you a text that night. We could talk about that. that you was... didn't. You didn't or didn't. You... I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. It was earlier in the show. I know so where this long. is going. I'm just uh, going to be careful. We'll talk about it off air first. Right. Um, tomorrow is Tuesday. It's a Flames game day in Chicago. Should we go? I'm more excited about Afterburner at the Grey Eagle with Dean. You can watch him tackle a couple pounds of wings. Like last week, he said he wasn't doing it. I know. I checked. I double. I circled back. He was sheepish about it, too. I was like, now listen. For those, just to let everybody in on it, uh, the last time we went to Grey Eagle to do the show, Rhett and I went, um, <laughs> there was a band there. Which is great. They have wonderful live entertainment. Which it's is tremendous. Oh, right? It does make doing a podcast tricky when there's Why? a drum kit sitting where our table usually is. Oh, so the be. same stage that was... Correct. Yeah. And look, I'd love to pin this on the great folks at the Grey Eagle. They don't double book. They know what they're doing. No, they don't. I double booked. <laughs> and then I decided uh, to it's join the show... <laughs> When eventually you guys did yeah, settle so somewhere where you could record Yeah, so fucks up the scheduling. So we go to the casino, leave the casino, take the gear, go back to the studio, set up the gear again, and then fuckhead is like, oh, hey, I'm not working it, but I'll, I'll join the show. I had uh, wanted to apologize. Thanks. That's what you wanted to do. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I, mean, I can't believe you know the, the left winger on that play has got. He's got to be too. He's too deep. He's too. He's got to come up and cover the point guy. Shut what up. Game man. was that? That was Colorado. Yeah. Which I, which, if I recall, was a real nail biter. Most games against Colorado. That uh, was not had the a couple best there and for. Yeah. They, they did have a two-one that, lead through twenty, if I recall. They look skilled that Colorado squad. Yeah, they look all right. <laughs> uh, I believe the quote you just laid out was "ass hat fucks up the scheduling, then fuckhead dot dot dot." <laughs> right. <laughs> and we kept the swearing so long. Yeah, well, I mean, can't you can't see in the no, northern territory? No, listen, it's can... just I I'm really looting forward to hanging out with Pinder for four hours. Yeah, You're it has less that to do is with your the venue or what's happening, and more to nothing do with... to do with the casino. Uh-huh. No, I love the Gray Eagle. It's just for me. Nothing gets my heart pumping like spending some time, personal time, with Ryan Pinder. Like Saturday, and now Tuesday. You want to watch Blue Jays on Thursday? Now why I gotta move home? Cause you two can't get along. No, I mean, <sighs> are you moving home? Is that what I heard? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Give me I a was going to say, probably in the end, don't bother. Oh, Dean. Now, now we're having our off-air conversation. We're having the off-air. Jeez. I thought about it over the weekend. I was putting together this email with stuff. It's like, you know what? Pfft. Delete. Just, just <laughs> it's good, Ron. Don't, don't do it. <sighs> now, can I, now, your kids are doing something nice, aren't they? I did see something about your kids doing something nice. Why don't you participate in this niceness? Why don't you doing? take some pride in what's happening? Share some good news for once. Grab up a hammer and get to work. God damn it. There's a hammer. Stop. 
all good. People are like, what is this? What are they talking about? What are they Mondain. talking about? What are they doing? Good things do happen. You're going to have to subscribe. can't avoid them your whole life. You can find some good in life. You can do it. You can Imagine say something the, nice. Come on. Fill that big old heart right up with good vibes. Plaque. <laughs> are we done? No. Nope. I already yep. played it once. Can I play it? We'll play it and then it'll be. Did you just stop the hammering, maybe? No. That'll do it. Please let that be it. Jack, please end the show. See you, buddies. <laughs>